Rise is brought to you by... Open Your Eyes is brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank. And good morning and welcome to Open Your Eyes. Start your morning right. I'm April Martinez. And I'm Gavin Courtney. And welcome. Thank you so much for having us in your homes this morning, Belize. Good morning, Gavin. Good morning, April. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's another pretty warm morning. <laughs> yes, yes. But you know what? It's so bright out by the time I leave my home in Belopan that I don't have to put on the high beam. Ah, and yeah. so I'm happy about it. And then I get to see the actual sunrise, sunrise as I'm driving out. So that's really nice. Yeah, that's true. That's one of the, I mean, like, you know, people, it's, it's funny. People like always, or whenever I say that I'm not typically a morning person, <laughs> people always ask, but then how do you do the show? And I'm like, no, there's like, there's good benefits of it. And one of the best parts of, about it, honestly, seeing the sunrise uh, is, um, on the days that we come in, um, yeah. it, it, and it actually really does, um, you know, have put a different start to your day. Gavin, I did not know you weren't a morning person. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm a night owl, I like staying up late always. Okay. Ever since I was like a little child, I always have been so. It, so you, so you have to go sleep to me. early that night before my kids do the show that morning. No, not <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what the coffee's for. <laughs> okay, yeah. point taken. Point taken. But you know, it it it's one of. I think it's a good. Um, discipline to at least try to start your morning right yep. and early um, just to, to make sure that you get a, an early start for the day mm -hmm. right um, I think I was looking at a, a friend was doing a survey on online and he was asking people what time do they function mm -hmm. for the day and I'm I'm a morning person so I eat with or without this show I want to get to like 4 30 mm -hmm. in the morning and my functioning clock is about 6 my window is about 6 to 2 p.m. Okay. I start crashing after 2 and then I probably need an next coffee for, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for function mm -hmm. for the rest. But I can't work after like 8 p.m. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I can't, don't ask me to do anything. I want just, I'll just crash. No, well, it depends on like, for me, that's l like typically, the, my, that's like my, that's when my window is beginning at 8 p.m. Yeah, like that's, that's for a lot of people. Yeah, that's where, that's where like my, like if we're talking about like daytime, mm -hmm. like I, my idea, like I start to pick up probably like around 10 a.m. Like no, regardless of when I wake up, like. <laughs> Even though work starts at 8. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And then like I do, I will say that like I, I remember and I used to talk to Marlene about this all the time, like on the show when is like when I got my dog last year when he was a puppy and he used to wake me up every single morning at like five mm -hmm. if like latest 5 30 and and for a long time i was doing the morning thing um consistently and it wasn't really bad and i didn't i you know seeing the sunrise and stuff every day was was good and i was getting used to it but mm -hmm. still like i found that like getting I, up early. yeah i still it wasn't it is it's not like my natural thing <laughs> but you know i i, I don't know i guess for wherever you are and, and however you plan to to function for the day it's just nice that at least you're up with us today yep. um so that we can talk about the highlights of last night's news and um right before we started rolling gavin myself and our producer shanice we were having a conversation about mental wellness in belize and um, mental illness and that kind of um, trumped the conversation about the video that went viral yesterday with the two women that were having an altercation at the um, bus terminal in, in Belize City. And, um, you know, everybody's a bystander. Sometimes when these things happen, no one really knows what to do. Um, the average civilian will not know what to do. Um, what was even a little bit more heartbreaking was the fact that there was a police officer that was there and she refused to um, intervene. I don't know why she refused to intervene. I, I think somebody said that she says she doesn't want to get fired, right? But um, whatever they, whether she was off duty or on duty or she was just, you know, trying to, to, to uh, not be a part of the situation, 
um, it is her duty to serve and protect. And regardless if she was with wearing her badge or not, she should have intervened in some kind of way. You know, things like that happen. People that have mental well illnesses, uh, we should try as a community to take care of them, regardless if you are a police officer or, or a civilian. But, you know, when things like that happen, you're in the moment, your adrenaline isn't really, sometimes you freeze, you don't know what to do. Um, but in this case, you know, she was asked to intervene and she said no. Yeah, and I think um, it highlights a lot of different things. Um, one of the things which we were talking about, of course, in the first place was the lack of, of services mm -hmm. um, that cater to people who have different needs, who may be, they may have a mental disability or have some sort of condition mm -hmm. which makes it, um, you know, difficult for them to integrate into society like normal. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the first place, it's, it's, it's bad that we see a lot of people on the street um, without proper resources. Um, and uh, of course, people who are struggling, struggling with um, different disorders like this, a lot of the times we see um, there are moments where, they're, where um, they lash out yeah. or um, where they come into conf conflict with each other, people in society. And uh, the secondary thing is that you know you want to you would want to hope that in that sort of a situation, um, somebody would be able to intervene to de-escalate the situation, um, to defuse um, you know the violence at least. And um, it, it's sad to see um, nobody intervening, and, and of course the image with the um, you know there being a, a a police officer in uniform right next right yeah. next to the, literally right next to the confrontation right. um, and, and nobody stepping in. It, it, it really, um, it, it, it's heartbreaking in a way, you know, I because would, you want, you wish that, you know, the, the right thing could have been done by the, the two women who were involved. Yeah, a uh, compel Chester Williams said that, um, that they're looking into the matter. She, she has some, the, the, the police officer there in, in the video has some, some questions to answer, you know, she has to kind of, um, to, to, to explain herself then, why she didn't do her, her due diligence. I mean, I, I would imagine that there were probably other police officers around. She's just the one that was caught on, on film. Um, but regardless of it, you know, I, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to, to witness something like that. And then you're not really sure how to handle that situation. I, I think that we, the conversation about mental wellness in this country, we're beginning to talk about it, you know, that, and that's great. Um, and we need to, yes, A, find the problems, but also B, come up with proper solutions. And I think one of the things that we've talked about on this show time and time again is that we don't have, like you rightfully said, resources. Um, and it's really not in the, in the job of the police officer to, to deal with mental wellness, to deal with mental illness. That is, a, that is a sickness, that is something that the health department should be um, responsible for. Unfortunately, in Belize, we don't have that as yet. Um, and I would hope that, that someday that would be the, the, the next mission at, at hand for you know, the, the safety and, and health departments in this country. But, um, when we talk about these altercations, and this is something that Gavin and I were also discussing this morning, um, I don't know about you, but I am already tired of talking about murder cases. Mm -hmm. I am, I am it's, it's, it's been, what, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yesterday. That's all we've been discussing. Yes, um, we've had a, a spike, I suppose you can call it, yeah. in violence um, over the past week. And um, especially the weekend, seeing um, the highest figures in mortality, um, with five since five murders alone since Friday, um, since Friday um, all over the country, yeah. and it's left different communities, of course, devastated, and and the loved ones of all involved are, you know, reeling from these tragedies, and it's really unfortunate that. Um, we see situations like this unfolding, mm -hmm. um, and we know that there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of different factors at play in, in, in each circumstance, but um, for, for us to keep going through these cycles of violence is really, it, it's difficult to watch. And especially when um, some of the people involved are, are so young, yeah. you know. Um, it says a lot for, what, for where we are um, as a society in that we've been unable to 
really tackle this 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 pro this problem um, in a way that that can give you know give us some sort of assurance that yeah. that, that, that we're on the right track and that you know we're we're moving towards a safer society, but it's not um, it's not really happening. You know our 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 violence murder ratio to conviction is very low, mm -hmm. um, and I I would wonder. You know, a lot of people, yesterday I, I heard some, some, some people on the street saying, oh, that big curfew get lifted and all of the restrictions get lifted, so everybody go wild. I don't know. I think it's too soon to, to, to provide that kind of, um, that, 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 that kind of um, thinking, right? You, we, have to, we have to kind of see how, how the statistics would go. But, you know, Gavin, you're absolutely right. I, I feel that we are talking more and more about it each day. I'm not necessarily sure. I think some. Of, I think uh, according to the police report, some of them are related to gang violence. Some of them are related to drugs. I, I think that they're one and the same. <laughs> you know, um, the, there was a the missing teenager, and then he was he was found. You know, his body decomposing already. It was too late. I. I'm. Tr I, I want to get your understanding of this as as somebody that focuses on law, mm -hmm. right? Why is it that? we have that difficult time going from investigation to conviction to, to, to the end results, I guess I would yeah, ask. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's, there's a whole lot of different factors at play. Um, the main thing is that, um, you know, when you have a crime, right, let's, let, let's choose murder, for, for example, um, because, you know, that's, that's what we're talking about. Um, in order to to really prove a case that um, murder requires, uh, there's two elements really, uh, we're talking about murder. You have the physical element, which is the mm -hmm. actual act, and yeah. you need the mental element, which is to prove intent. Yeah. Um, that it's not just an accident, or it's not um, some sort of, of uh, or you know, something that's premeditated, as, mm -hmm. as they like mm -hmm. to say. Um, now, both sides, both ways are hard to prove. Now, first of all, um, it requires a lot on it, it requires a lot on the police's part to mm -hmm. do the cor the type of investigation, um, gather the correct evidence uh, to to and and not only gather the correct evidence, make sure it's handled in the proper way. There's a whole lot of procedural steps that yeah. that, that that take place from the time that the act is committed till it gets to court. Um, so there's that in the first instance, just to prove that. It, it get adequate proof that the person just did what they did. Mm -hmm. And remember that we are still, for the most part, if not completely, um, we're re not relying on forensic evidence. Yeah. Um, we're re completely reliant on the, vic on the testimony of witnesses. That's the other huge problem, because we have a huge difficulty in um, getting people to participate willingly in you know, proving uh, in, in, to participate in a murder trial, yeah. um, it requires not only for you to give that sort of evidence, go to court, be cross-examined by the defense, which is uncomfortable in and of itself for yeah. a lot of people, but, you're, but the biggest factor is, is that you know, people are concerned that they're going to be targeted, yeah. so they're not going to be willing to give evidence against people who are involved in the proceedings, and then of course, without the proper evidence, then the case falls apart. Yeah. Um, we don't have forensics. We don't have people who are willing to put forward so that when the person does get to um, trial, and you know, and we're talk, and you know, we're not even talking about the the this the systematic um, flaws in the system. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the backlog in cases, and there's a whole lot of factors at play as to why we we haven't been able to secure uh, a lot of convictions for a lot of these serious crimes. Wow. Um, things. Our, I mean, um, Minister Musa, the Minister of Home Affairs, has been speaking about different improvements that his ministry has been making um, to, for, to the police department and an increase for fund. We saw in the budget presentation yeah. there was also um, an increase for um, forensic, um, uh, ab well, to, 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 to equip resources. department with some forensic yeah. resources um, because it is a dire need. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, you, you, you mentioned earlier, um, we have to, yeah, we, it's multifaceted in that we yeah. also have to look at the causes of the crime yeah. itself, um, whether it's gang related, whether it's drug related. Mm -hmm. um, the, the approach 
to fighting crime has to be really multifaceted. <laughs> I, I feel like, like we, it's, it seems then that we need to, to continue to invest in the, in the adequate resources. Yeah. Um, and, and things that, for, well, when you said forensics, I'm sitting here just like, yeah, mm -hmm. that, is, that is 100%. And you know that the, the reality is that we do have the man, I don't say the man power because, you know, one or two people that have the knowledge is, in, is not sufficient. Um, but the reality is, is that we do have people out there that that can that are that are capable that have the the skill set um but there is no place for them to work mm. because there is no funding for a forensic department there is no funding for certain investigation departments and therefore you know you're stuck doing tourism or something mm -hmm. so it um it boils down to opening the job opportunities for those people by providing resources and departments where they can work in um you know, and I know it's possible. We we just created an entire blue economy department, and we've hired the, the right people that can that can work and mm -hmm. are qualified to, to, to do their jobs. Um, and I think that that's that's something that we're gearing towards. And I hope that we're able to to continue to to acquire resources and open new avenues for people to um, to use their skill set and to probably hopefully get their conviction rates going up. Yeah, I I. I don't know. That makes me. It, it makes me sad that we come up here and we talk about it. I think that's why people don't want to watch the media anymore because it's just sad news all the time. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, uh, but it but it, it reflects you know the reality of, of what's going on in our communities, and yeah. and uh, I think that it it also reminds us that it's it's um, we also have to look at our own realities and, and try to, one, demand better mm -hmm. um, when we can, um, and then also look out for ourselves in, in our own community when we, um, to, to, to try to encourage, you know, the people around us um, to be, to intervene or to help when they can, uh, to, to look out for, for young people, yeah. especially like if they're at risk, um, and, and try to, and, and try to cooperate um, if you do see something, if you know something. Mm. Um, it can be difficult, of course, um, but uh, situations won't change unless, you know, we as a society change. And that requires um, effort on the side of the people who are, you know, the, the people who are doing investigations, the politicians who are setting policies yeah. and stuff. And it also requires a little bit of effort from us as well. Agreed. And I just, I want to also make one more comment on that because you said, see something, say something also. And this goes in light with the, with the teenager that was found um, at the cemetery yesterday. Um, kids, teenagers, talk to your parents. If something mm -hmm. is wrong, even if you know you are getting in trouble, talk to your parents because somebody will be able to help in some way that father said he had no idea he doesn't know if his son was in trouble he doesn't know if he had it he doesn't know he didn't know that something would be wrong yeah and and in small cases like this you have to be able to try to speak to your parents um but just to end it on a lighter note um believes one third place in the women's cross country um cycling match this this week and um Yay for them. Uh, yes. We were the first and second went to an American team. Yeah. Um, we congratulate them as well. And um, we know Kaya Katus was not participating this, this year because she's, um, she's on a team in the United States. But congratulations uh, to Blijian. And we have to move on with our show. Yes. So yeah. we hope we were able to, you know, brighten up the mood from yes. all of that murder yes. <laughs> with some with some good news and we hope to continue doing that with our eye opener this morning and our eye opener is taken from dailyam.com and it goes like this we do not need to suffer or be in misery in this life in order to do well in the world many of us have a deep-seated belief that in order to do well in the world we have to suffer and sacrifice. This commonly held idea stems from a certain mentality inherited from ancestors who came before us who may have experienced this as true. Beliefs from our own past life experiences can also make an appearance in this lifetime. This is often the way in which false beliefs take hold and don't let go, even though they are no longer relevant. 
we must all live in our own lives in our own time and learn what is true for us because very few people very, very few truths prove valid for all people all the time in order to evolve it is important that we have examined the contents of our minds and hearts and get to the root of what we believe about reality generally our concerns of the moment can be trusted to guide our inquiry. If we are not manifesting and maintaining the abundance we know we deserve, then this issue is calling us to look into the hidden corners of our psyches and root out any remaining beliefs that tell us we must suffer and sacrifice in order to do well. Our efforts will take us one more step away from this energy sapping belief that we no longer need. It's very funny because um, I was having this conversation just yesterday with a friend of mine mm -hmm. about, you know, working 10 times harder in this life because your parents or your grandparents sacrificed so much. Mm -hmm. And so you can't fail because they did so much to get you to where you are or so that you can be better. Yeah. Um, and I, th when, I, when I was reading it, that we do not need to suffer or be in misery in this life in order to do well in the world, I was like, but... Am I miserable? Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's one of those, I have to do this eight to five job because I have to, I have to be successful. I have to do this. I have to. And that's a lot of pressure on a person. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, not even, like, I was thinking to go even a step further because, like, I was, it, it took me to, like, to school. And, you know, you have this, um, I, I remember, especially like when I was in, in the university and law school and stuff, you have this kind of culture where people are like, you, they always like compete to see who can like, you know, drain themselves harder. It's like, oh, I was up three days mm -hmm. nonstop studying and blah, yep. blah, blah. It's yep. like, well, I did this. I was up for two yep. weeks nonstop studying, yep. you know, and then you have this whole thing about like, I memorized this and, um, and, and that's, that culture sort of also can spill into work where yeah. people like, you know, they want to like do their overtime or do something, and we're always pu and we're always pushing ourselves because we believe that you know um, it's it's you know it, in order to achieve cer certain things or some level of success, you know you have to be like on the grind all the time. Yeah. Um, and I think that that sort of thing is is can be definitely you can go to the point where it's unhealthy, yeah. where you don't spend enough time on yourself and focus um, on your well-being, and, and and you need to rest yeah. um, and take care of yourself. Um, and and so, what I think is that. Um, uh, but on the, on the flip side, I think that we're also seeing that like slowly and surely the response to that is sort of changing. Especially like if you look abroad with with certain like mm -hmm. movements like with labor and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, people talking about how you should people should get more you know time off and mm -hmm. people you know need. Uh, and it, and the results are that especially since the pandemic, we saw how you know the work, the cult, the transition from working from home and stuff did change a lot. It yeah. increased productivity in yeah. a lot of places. Yeah. It um, and it showed us that the traditional way of thinking and uh, of that we have to push ourselves past our limit is doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily true. I really like that you brought that up because one of the things that we are trying so hard to do in the, in Belize and in around the world is get back to normalcy. Yeah. But I always tell people normal wasn't working. Absolutely. And we, we absolutely do see an increase in, in, in you know, work ethic and, and work production. Now that we've been able to kind of not cut the time, but just balance, more. balance it a little bit. And, you're abs you know, I, I, I do agree that now in this day and era, we have um, a lot more information um, available to us. Uh, we have a lot more resources available to us. We do not need to always constantly um, prove ourselves by struggling. Mm -hmm. right? We're able to get there at our own pace. There is no t definite timeline that says you have to have your house and family and kids and career at mm -hmm. 30. You can do that at 40 and still be happy. So I, I, I like that, that, that we're, I like this eye opener. We were changing slowly yeah. and that's for our mental being. But um, we have to move on. Yep. And we have to move on to our weather for this morning. And we have on the line Mr. Derek Rudon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Okay, you want to tell me that you stay hot today? Well, it's going to be warm. <laughs> I won't say it's hot just yet. <laughs> okay, so okay, what does our general situation look like? Okay, um, we have a moderate east area flu. Um, 
over our area and it will support one or two showers, but not too much. For today, then, we can expect sunny skies to cloud the stones uh, with isolated showers. Tonight, partly cloudy. Again, only isolated showers. And the winds? And the Okay, the wind will be from the east at 10 to 20 knots, and the sea stays choppy to moderate. And what about our temperatures? Okay, highs today will range from 86 Fahrenheit along the coast to 92 inland, but only 74 degrees up in the mountains. And the lows for tonight, 79 along the coast, 72 inland, and 64 in the mountain pine ridge area. Okay. And what is our outlook for Wednesday and Wednesday night? Okay, um, well, we're expecting mainly fair weather with little or no rain, so maybe a light shower, but nothing much. Do we have anything uh, to look out for in our fire forecast today? Okay, um, well, in the fire forecast, um, we are expecting the, the risk for forest and brush fires to be moderate. Any sarcasm updates? Um, uh, not today, not okay. today. Um, we generally start that on Wednesday. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Rudan. You heard it here. And keep cool. Oops. All right. Yep. So uh, that was Derek Rudan with our forecast uh, for the morning. Um, I apologize for hanging up. <laughs> yep. But it's going to be a uh, warm one. Yes. Um, so, to, so do try to um, stay cool today as yes. well. Yes, but um, we have to get into our show for this morning, and we have a packed morning for you all to have some very important discussions, um, and also some, some flavorful discussions. Uh, this morning, we will be hearing from the Department of Transport and Road Safety Project, who will provide us with the do's and don'ts in an effort to minimize traffic accidents over the Easter holidays. These are conversations that we've been having for the past week, and um, I really, really hope that for our viewers out there that we can take these, um, these do's and don'ts seriously. Absolutely. And uh, in our second conversation, we're going to be talking with Inspirational Promotions. And uh, they're an organization who's been created by two brothers uh, to assist uh, children who are less fortunate to get access to electronic devices. And so we're going to be hearing all about the work that they do in our second segment this morning. All right, nice. And to wrap up our Tuesday, well, no, not to wrap up our Tuesday, but to wrap up our conversation segment, um, we will be hearing from Blue by Inar, who is creating hot cross buns. You ever make hot cross buns for Easter? I've made it once. Okay, then we'll come all good. good. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, try and learn today. Right. Make yep. hot cross buns. Yeah. Yep. So that's going to be our third conversation. And then right before we close, it is Tuesday, so I will be talking about some of uh, the hottest social media topics on Trending Talks Tuesdays. All right. Sounds good. And with that, we're going to take our first break and we get back. Traffic safe. After a rough week of school, Jake and his friends decide to treat themselves to frozen coffee. And since they don't have cash on them, they decide to use eCash. With eCash's geolocation feature, Jake can easily find the nearest coffee spot. With eCash's built-in option to split bills, Jake can pay the bill and his friends can reimburse their portion of the bill. Jake scans the merchant's code and confirms payment. Jake then views his transaction history and taps on the transaction recently made, then taps the split the bill button where he selects the evenly option to evenly split the bill. The application splits the bill automatically. His friends receive and accept the request. Geolocation and splitting the bill via eCash makes Jake enjoy his digital lifestyle. Download the SmartStream app on the Android Play Store and create your account to get access to movies and stream at home or on the go. Prepaid customers can purchase regular data packages or get a discounted rate on a special SmartStream package 
by dialing 7737. Postpaid customers will be billed monthly. Never miss a movie again with Smart Street. My name is Janine and I live in Belize City. I've been a social worker for two years now. Social work is actually a difficult job. It takes a lot from you, not physically, but mentally. I went for an interview once for a job in dealing with youths at risk. And while in the interview, I was asked the question if I'm sure I wanted the job because it was dealing with troubled youths. And the interviewer looked at me and said, well, we would prefer a meal for the job. I was hurt at first because I thought I was as qualified as the meal to get the job. And it really stuck with me because then I thought, if I am as qualified, why wasn't I chosen? Why would you want to eliminate 50% of the workforce? People are supposed to be hired based on merit and not gender. If you're looking for low-cost television advertising, have we got a deal for you. Advertise on Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community. Use our Daily Classifieds to recruit employees, promote specials, promote your products or services, promote a business opportunity, increase traffic to your website, and advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you save valuable time and money. Call us today at 223-0146 or visit us at our offices on Pony Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. Okay, students, let's focus now. Teacher, yes, teacher. Can anyone tell me what sustainable development means? Ganze? Huh? Anybody? Teacher, teacher. Last night my dad was talking about sustainable development and he said something about people and um, nature and something else. Oh, and money. That's good. But did you ask your dad what sustainable development really means? Yes, teacher. But he said I was too young to know what that is. Is it something bad? No, Balisha. It's not bad. It's delicious. Well, at least it looks delicious on the TV. Can I get some? No, Valdo. You're thinking about edible arrangements. 
That's what you saw. Edible arrangement. <laughs> Don't laugh, class. Some people get confused with sustainable development. But when we balance the three things Padisha said, we achieve sustainable development. What do you mean by balance, teacher? It is when people use only the resources they need from the forest, rivers, and sea, and leave some resources to grow back again. But teacher, why do people cut down the nice trees that give us shade and kill the poor animals? Because people need wood to build houses, food to cook, and water to drink. But teacher, we have enough trees to get wood and enough plants and animals to get food. Good enough that we can sell them and make money. That may be so, Waldo. We need money to live. But if we use up all the resources, then there will be none left for our friends and families to see later. Do you think that's fair? No, teacher. That's being greedy. My mom always tells me to use what I need now and save for rainy days. Exactly. Teacher, teacher, if we take care of Belize's precious resources and practice sustainable development, we and our children can enjoy all of Belize. That's what I learned from the Department of the Environment when they came to present at our school. Oh, that's excellent, Waldo. And if you're joining us right now, we are just getting our first conversation for the morning started. And as we mentioned before the break, we are talking about road safety. And uh, talking to us uh, about this very important topic, we have in our studio uh, Sylvia Neal, who is the Office Administrator from the Road Safety Project, as well as Peter Williams, who is the Operations Officer from the Department of Transport, and David Castillo, who is Assistant Operations Officer from the Department. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome. Hi, good morning. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is an important topic, especially around this time of the year. Um, but uh, before we talk about some of the road safety, um, or in general, uh, let's talk a little bit just about what um, the Department of Transport and the Road Safety Project um, kind of does. So um, perhaps you can start off by just talking a little bit about the Department of Transport. Okay, awesome. Uh, thank you guys for having us. Um, so I would like to start off by saying that in a nutshell, the Department of Transport is the national body that deals with the regulating of land transportation and, uh, and road users in its entirety. We also deal with um, a lot of regional and international uh, matters as well relating to land transportation. Uh, we are involved in um, national trade and anything land transportation, essentially trade, tourism, environment, climate change. All these other um, factors or industries, we are also involved with as well as a department. Um, but our primary function um, is to, to manage and mitigate um, road users. And we also look at the legislation, anything pertaining to, to traffic in Belize. And the conjoint road safety project with the transport department. So good morning, everybody. So. The Road Safety Project is a partnership between the government of Belize and the Caribbean Development Bank. And this came about to increase road safety awareness in the country and trying to change the culture. The first project uh, was um, the, the um, highway from Belmopan to Belize City, the George Price Highway was the first corridor. And that had um, various components that was implemented to see how effective those changes would be in curbing the rush and the terrible behaviors that has been displayed by a lot of people who use the road now, trying to increase their safety on a whole. And now the second road safety is doing the same thing. We are in charge of the softer interventions when it comes to corridors for the the coastal highway and the upgrading of the northern highway from Belize City to the border. Overall, 
we have various components, but overall it's basically to promote road safety among road users. I also would like to add um, by stating that we also engage ourselves with other stakeholders, important stakeholders um, that plays um, basically a similar role. Uh, we have, for example, the Vehicle Care Unit. We have the Department of Forestry, um, the Environment, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we need to work with these stakeholders as to harmonize whatever challenges that we have on, on the road, you know? Uh, so we play, a major, we play a major role and we, we do that um, in suit with the other stakeholders. Can you talk to us a little bit about your, um, your campaign? I mean, we've been kind of discussing not just road safety, but just all forms of, of um, transportation, uh, the police port authority, the police department, and so forth. We have you all. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing differently in, in terms of your campaign? Um, how are you trying to get uh, passing the people that are on the road to adhere to these road safety measures? I would say stick to basics. We try to stick to basics in the sense that education is the foundation when it comes to road safety and all other areas. Um, of course, due to COVID, um, we were unable to visit the schools as we used to in the past because from preschool up, we would go, we would visit these institutions, speak with the kids. Um, that was very productive. Um, now we're starting to make that transition back again um, through the road safety project, we have um, different uh, um, campaigns going on right now. So you will see some of them in, in the next uh, uh, few months. So education is paramount. Um, we cannot stress or emphasize on that enough. We always try to visit the different institutions. We try to speak with, um, with, 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 with the media mm -hmm. um, because we, we, can't, we can't stress on education. Because enforcement is one element. But nothing like when the people have the information. You yes, definitely. Okay. And um, how are you in, involved in the, in the campaign now, ever since COVID kind of messed it up a little bit? Well, without a doubt, COVID, the whole, the whole um, COVID situation has slowed down what the way we would usually carry out our campaigns or workshops within schools. So we have been a little bit limited when it comes to certain things but we still would have our public our little public um expo boot set up mm -hmm. sometimes we would do it right in front of our offices at times where we would try to disseminate flyers to the public we even join up with the department of transport and the police department to to put out these flyers through the joint checkpoints that that they would usually um do over the course of the year, no? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I say the, the media campaign is something critically and vitally important. I, to the most part, I, I deal with a lot of enforcement. Mm -hmm. And in regards to enforcement, uh, we can be out there every single day, but that won't uh, reduce or stop the, 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 the crisis out there. So I believe by championing the campaign, the media campaign, uh, by through the educational um, aspect of, of, of road safety, um, that is important. That's, that's where we need to emphasize, we'll put more work. Yes, um, both the Department of Transport, uh, road safety has been doing a lot. We have a very active um, social media. Mm -hmm. um, we all know the young people, the rating of the young people using social media is one of the highest. Yes. And when you watch the RTAs, it's mostly the young people that are um, in these accidents. So we need to um, reach out to the young people through these um, um, campaign, um, these campaign. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a very proactive um, PR uh, manager in the department, Ms. Indira Logan. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very active, very proactive um, in, in promoting road safety and so forth on social media. Okay. I, I wanted to add, um, although COVID presented tremendous challenges for the department and for road safety. Um, it was also perfect for us in the sense that it allowed us to explore new options and new possibilities on how to get the message across. And so through our, our IT department, um, we were looking at creating uh, short uh, uh, graphic videos um, or animated videos rather um, to be able to reach out to the young folks. And so um, like I mentioned, in the, in, the, in the next few months, you guys will be seeing 
uh, more commercials with um, animation and so on geared towards young people and so on. So we, we, we want to be able to explore other options when it comes to, to um, putting out videos and other things. Um, and even when it comes to like maybe competitions, so engage the young people. So that is critical, engaging the young people. Exactly, and, and to add to that, we at the Road Safety Project, we also have, we have our website and we have our Facebook page and of course the various media campaigns, you know, the, the jingles that has been one of our, um, I would say, really one of our most important and that definitely has a wide reach. Mm -hmm. You know, so we are really we are really happy about that, you no, know, because a lot of people always give us feedback about the messages that always resound with them after they have watch a, watched a video or something like that, you no. Know, so those are very effective. And where do you find are the areas of priority that you guys really try to highlight in in spreading some of the messages or, or areas which people um, based on the feedback that you get are not as familiar with that you really need to try to educate people okay. about. Okay, one of the main ones is the road markings. A lot of people are unaware that the road markings are a traffic sign, right? Yep. And um, they have a meaning, they have a purpose. It is there for the safety of all road users. It indicates when to overtake, when not to overtake. You know, for example, if you see the, the solid line and you're approaching a curve or a hill, it is warning you do not overtake because the risk is higher. Um, when the line is broken, um, it's telling you that you can, you can overtake. It is safe to overtake, providing that there is no oncoming vehicle from um, ahead or from behind if, if there's any vehicle. So it is a sign. Um, so that is one of the main things that a lot of people are unaware of, mm -hmm. and we often try to stress that. Another thing is the speed limit. You'd be surprised. Um, a lot of people still are unaware of what our speed limits are. Even though we have several posted signs throughout the, the country, that is still one of the questions that people still ask, you know, what is the speed limit again, you know? They, they so, ask, they don't know, or they just ignore the sign? Um, well, <laughs> I, I would want to think it's, it's, um, it's genuine, uh, because some people, um, like Sylvian and Mr. Castillo said, on our social media platform, um, we do get a lot of questions about that, because there is a lot of miscommunication. Mm -hmm. um, you have people who are saying, oh, the speed limit is this, the speed limit is that. So they, they, they come to us to, to get clarity on what the speed limit is. Okay, that brings me to a, to a particular question. This is something that I'm not sure, I don't know who is in charge of it, but when you put the speed limits, do you use miles or kilometers? Miles. Okay. Mm. We're... I, I, I had to ask yeah, because you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. when when uh, initially when a, a new person applying for their driver's license, mm -hmm. um, you it requires you to take a, a theoretical um, right. test, you know, mm -hmm. and in there specify the speed limits uh, on a, on the national highways and in villages and mm -hmm. towns, you know. So it is there. So um, that person initially should know what what is the speed, legal speed limit in Belize. Mm -hmm. I I will add though that. We see a lot of the, the new vehicles coming into our country have um, kilometers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we are in the process of making that adjustment to the legislation, but currently it is miles per hour. And there are a few signs that have both miles per hour and the kilometers, um, which is good. Uh, but again, for our standard, it is miles per hour here in Belize. Okay. Uh, can we discuss a little bit about your campaign for the, for the Easter holiday? Uh, what is that looking like? Okay, so for this uh, Easter, we are stressing a little bit on enforcement primarily with a little bit of education as I mentioned, but, but we want to take a more stringent approach when it comes to enforcement. Uh, Mr. Casillo is leading um, the enforcement and he's coordinating with other um, stakeholders and other law enforcement agencies. And, and of course we have the road safety who uh, they're focusing primarily on the educational aspect and so I'll have Mr. Castillo, just give some more details on that. Yes, yes. Well, we do realize that this Easter um, weekend mm -hmm. is basically the peak of people moving around, yeah. um, just as in September in Independence Time. So we are mindful that we need to be proactive on the, on the, on the roads, whereby we already um, put in place in our department um, a national um, enforcement ops um, starting from the Friday mm -hmm. all the way up to, up to Monday, you know, uh, it's going to be sustained um, during the peak hours. But in addition to that, we reached out to the other enforcement agencies 
Uh, for example, we'll be having the police joining us in these enforcements. Uh, but we went a little farther than that. Um, we saw the importance in getting other stakeholders involved, for example, forestry, the environment. But also we would want the vehicle care unit to partake because as we all know that there's abuse of government vehicles. Um, so we would want to be vigilant and monitor the movement of government vehicles over this Easter holidays, you know. Um, so basically that is our plans for over the Easter holiday. But in addition to that, I would also like to, to highlight um, some of the initiatives of the department. Uh, for over the past months, past months, we have been having sustained um, uh, uh, VCPs, um, checkpoints, countrywide, and jointly with the police officers because we saw the importance, especially watching the statistics of last year, November, there was a spike in RTAs, you know? Mm -hmm. And we realized that uh, we have to have sustained, um, these sustained checkpoints to try to harmonize the speed and so forth. Um, so, but based on that, watching the statistics it has been effective and we will continue to, to, to continue this sustain um, uh, checkpoints and uh, enforcement operations. Um, I want to, to ask about, we, we have these road safety laws in place, we have these regulations in place, but what would be the, the consequences if they are broken? And I, I ask because we talk about how mm -hmm. some people are not really sure of some of the laws, mm -hmm. but they have license. Right. Um, and so something as simple as trying to overtake somebody on the mm -hmm. right, or you know, overtaking on, on the lines mm -hmm. that are not, they're not supposed to overtake. Um, if, I am, if I am trying to, to park, and a motorbike or a vehicle is trying to overtake me on the right, mm -hmm. on the right and we collide, what would be the consequences of that? So, I'm sure that as an attorney, you could appreciate <laughs> all the complexities with that question uh, because it is, it is dependent. It is, it is dependent on several factors. Um, what, what I can say though is that when it comes to um, traffic offenses, it can be addressed three different ways. Mm -hmm. It can be addressed by way of a, or by means of issuance of a traffic violation ticket which is more, you know, quicker you get your ticket and you go about your business. You could be arrested um, and charged for the offense, mm -hmm. or you could be issued with a defendant summons. So it is to the discretion of the officer on the ground and depending, dependent on the circumstance. So those are the three ways. Now, if you're charged uh, by either way and you go before the court, the, the court also has discretion um, in terms of what penalties or fines to levy. And again, that is dependent on the offense, that is dependent on, on, the, on the defendant and the circumstance. So it can play out in different ways. But um, in a worst case scenario, a person can be imprisoned for an offense and they can be fined up to $1,000 for an offense uh, being committed. And the, their driving license could also be suspended or revoked. So those are some of the extreme penalties that could happen depending on the circumstance. Um, can we go into how you guys are putting that into your campaign? Um, well, that is standard, okay. really, that is standard. So once a violation ticket is issued and it is not paid, we have our system in place whereby we will you know, um, detect that the fine has not been paid. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do, though, is that we have a system in place whereby we send out an SMS blast to all persons who have been issued with a violation ticket to remind them to have the fine paid because a lot of people genuinely forget, right? They genuinely forget and, and um, they would, you know, it would slip them basically. And so we, we try to remind them. And so that helps to, to reduce the uh, amount of persons who go to the court. But nonetheless, that is standard. If you do not pay your, your violation ticket or if you're issued with a summons or um, if you're arrested and charged, you get your charge sheet and you proceed to court. So that is standard. I want to go into your program, and I want to talk a little bit about the do's and the don'ts, right? So what are the do's and what are the don'ts when it comes to road safety? So I would say um, for the don'ts, do not speed. We cannot emphasize that enough. Do not drink uh, or consume any type of uh, drugs or any type of you know, um, altering substance when you're driving. Um, ensure that you have on your seat belt at all times. Ensure that all passengers in the vehicles are wearing their seat belts. Do not drive with, child, with a child in your lap. 
or sitting in the, in the front passenger seat without a seat belt. Um, so those are some of my, yeah. my points for the don'ts. Yeah, <laughs> and then going for the, the cyclists then, yeah. uh, it's a must for them to have a helmet. Mm -hmm. You know, um, not have uh, excessive passengers on, on the cycle, because at times you all see that they have you know, Three or four adults people. and the kids mm -hmm. on the cycle, you know. Uh, that, that, that is not um, allowed, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an offense. But th those are very key um, points that I would stress, because especially watching the data, there has been more a rise or increase of um, RTAs when it comes to cyclists. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And actually, yeah, I was going to ask about the, the statistics and data. So um, is that also part of what you guys do? You, you look at statistics based on the accidents or, and, or well, what are some of the most common causes of accidents and, and also what are some of the most common violations? The prevalent of, offenses, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would look at, um, again, speeding, that is uh, top uh, when it comes to offenses, uh, prevalent offenses. We have the issue of um, distracted driving. Mm -hmm. um, persons who are utilizing their devices while driving, that is another um, area of concern. And seat belt. So those are the top three, mm -hmm. right? Top three prevalent and offenses. We've been talking a lot about the don'ts. What are some, some do's? do's. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, again, I, I know I mentioned the seat belt, but I, I can't stress it enough. So that is a do. Please ensure you wear your seat belt. Make sure everyone in the vehicle uh, is strapped up with their seat belt and um, ensure that you check your vehicle. That is a main do. Check the fluids of the vehicle, check the tires, um, ensure that your battery is working. Um, you know, in, again, ensure that the seat belt is working, ensure you have a spare tire, um, your, your jack, and other equipment that you would need to be able to, to fix your vehicle in, in the case that you break down. Uh, carry a set of tools in your vehicle um, if, if possible so that if there's any quick or immediate repairs that you need to do, you're able to do so. Um, notify someone uh, where you're going so that they know, okay, Mr. Sylvian is going to Placencia, okay, I know that. So if, if Mr. Sylvian breaks down, he knows that he has somebody who he can rely on. Yeah. Um, oftentimes we see uh, people break down on the road for not um, putting fluid in their radiator and the radiator overheat and you're broke down and you end up in a problem. Um, and so we want to encourage people to, to check these things. You could easily go uh, on YouTube and you find videos um, that will help to guide you on, on some of the basic elements that you need to check. Um, include the, the, the fluids for your, wi for your wipers, for your washer. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's very rudimentary, but um, going online helps to, to be able to put it into perspective for you. Yes, and to, to add to that, I would also want to say that especially during these times, it's Easter time and we know that a lot of people will be traveling with their families and loved ones. And that would usually mean that people would probably be traveling long distances as well. So we would want to advise everybody to please plan your trip accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, get enough rest. A lot of people might take, take this for granted, getting enough sleep, right? Uh, getting enough sleep can mean the difference between you being very alert and aware of your surroundings or blinking, falling asleep whenever you're probably coming back from where it, your destination. No? So we ask that you try to get enough sleep, try to plan your trip. If you know you have a long trip, you need, you need to prepare a proper schedule. Think of a, you need to think about your timing. If you know you have this destination you need to reach don't leave last minute or leave your de leave from home late and then you end up speeding mm -hmm. so that's one of the things those are some of the things we would really want to emphasize mm -hmm. be courteous on the road because sometimes you might not know somebody's situation we don't know if that driver can be a maybe a new a new driver mm -hmm. and then sometimes it's e very easy to to be um caught up in road rage because, oh, mm -hmm. oh, we look at this one. Oh, look at what this guy is doing. Look at what, oh, man, come on. You know, so it, it's b it, we need to be more courteous. I, I say that for all Belizeans, and especially here in Belize City, because we all know how, how rash people can be here in Belize City, you know. And, and I say that for countrywide, countrywide for everybody, because sometimes we, we, we grow very impatient, but sometimes being a little patient might mean the difference between life and death, no? Just, just to add on the, um, the, do, the to-do list, um, I have ensure that they have their 
um, driver's license valid, a valid yes. driver's license, their insurance, mm -hmm. yeah. and their motor vehicle license because when we're out there, there's That's no discretion. Exactly it's going to be across the board. Yes. Um, what makes a good driver? A cordial driver. Well, yeah, what makes a good A defensive forward. driver. A driver who is able to preempt, to be, you know, to be able to be vigilant while on the road and mm -hmm. preempt any movement from other road users because we have the vulnerable road users who are the pedestrians and the cyclists. And um, oftentimes I see people drive and they have no regard for a person riding a bicycle. I mean, anything could happen to that individual. They can hit a pot hole, they could, their, their feet could uh, slip the pedals, um, and, and they could fall down right in front of you, and then you would hit them. But because you're not uh, preempting any error that could take place, mm -hmm. you end up in a collision. And so to me, you have to be vigilant. That um, and you have to be focused because driving is a task, you know. I see people you nowadays take driving as a leisure, right? And uh, they're just cracking back in their seat, playing music and driving around. But it is a serious responsibility being behind a wheel. And um, I think oftentimes people take that for granted. And so being vigilant when you're driving, it makes a difference. Monitoring your speed, monitoring your gauges mm -hmm. on the vehicle. Because how can you be driving? And, and your vehicle overheat and you didn't notice that on your gauge. Yeah. You have to be monitoring your gauge, monitor your speed, monitor your fuel and so on. Um, and so it, it is a task and it should be treated as, uh, as such uh, per se, right? Um, you have people all around the world who they go through intense training before they, they get their driving license because on a global scale it is recognized as such, right? It, it is recognized that it is a, it a, it is a tedious task. Um, but, you know, of course we have instances where people take it for granted, um, but we want to encourage people to be vigilant. Uh, be cordial when you're driving. Uh, Mr. Sylvian made an excellent point. We have new drivers on the road every day, yeah. every single day, and so we take it for granted that these persons on the road, they're experienced and so on, and that is not the case, right? So, yeah. Um, I, was, uh, I wanna ask, um, especially given the time, um, about the particular issue of dr drinking and driving, um, which we can, like, I suppose, expect um, to see more of mm -hmm. uh, on a weekend like this. So what are some of the ways in which the department or even some of the people who you collaborate with, like the police department, monitor and enforce um, the issue of, of, of people who are driving under the influence? So, um, on, uh, in regards to the, to the um, special ops over this weekend, um, what our officers will be equipped with the um, breathalyzer. Okay. Um, so they will be having that um, in every uh, checkpoint location. Um, in addition to um, the checkpoints, we'll also be having patrols uh, to intercept any um, drinking while, while driving um, to just ensure the roads are safe, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but in addition from the Department of Transport, the police have their own techniques in regards to dealing with the drinking and driving. So, but definitely um, rest assured that we'll be out there monitoring the while drinking and driving. So our officers are trained um, in detecting um, persons who might be inebriated, right? Um, you have um, telltale signs, you know, the, the pupils might be dilated, you know, that, that uh, aroma of alcoholic beverage. These are some of the, the, the telltale signs. Um, you know, you look in the vehicle, you see a lot of pint bottles in the vehicle. Um, sometimes the, the, the passengers are also a telltale sign because if you stop a vehicle and the passenger has a beer in his or her hand, that can be an indication that the driver was also drinking as well. Um, and so the device that we have on the breathalyzers is extremely advanced. Uh, if we stop you guys driving on the road and there's a cup in the vehicle and we suspect that it contains alcohol, we can simply take the device and put it over that cup and it's going to give a reading as to whether or not alcohol is in there. Because people try to be clever and they try to outwit the law. And, and you know, that is human nature. Mm -hmm. um, and so they would pour the, the alcoholic beverage into a, a cup or into the, um, the new uh, Yeti cups that you know, is so popular right now. Yeah. So, so they pour it in, that, in those cups <laughs> and then they have it there. And oh, I drink a little coffee, but there were Guinness or all these salt or something. And so, so if, if we have reason to suspect that they're drinking, then we simply would test the, the um, substance. And so you yeah. have to make I open my ethical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, but it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a good, um, it's a mm. good mechanism because, like you rightfully mentioned, we try um, out, with, out, the law. out, out <laughs> with the law as much as possible, right? Yeah. Um, we're all guilty of that. Yeah. Um, I hear you have a jingle for us. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. I do. 
Uh, so can you tell us uh, more about that and why you're using that and emphasizing that? Okay, so this was one of the first jingles I did with, with the first ro road safety project, and it's called Wear Your Seat Belt, Lock It, right? And um, as the title states, it's basically talking about the importance of wearing a seat belt. The whole idea behind these jingles was basically to bring road safety in a, in a more engaging a more engaging way mm -hmm. to, to catch the attention of road users very, very quickly. And at the end of the day, leave a message with them, right? And that's the importance of wearing your seatbelt. So it basically talks about seatbelt reduces your chance of death because we all know that if someone is not wearing a seatbelt, their body is basically turned into a missile, especially if they are in the back seat of a vehicle. You, you, you need to remember that that's energy in motion, right? So if there is a collision, the person at the back flies to the front. They can fly straight into the person's neck and they can break the driver's neck because you, are, you will then be going the same, you will continue to go the same speed of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. so, so just imagine that, right? I, I know it's not something that anybody wants to imagine, but cases like yeah. that do happen. Yeah. yeah, it does happen, and wearing a seatbelt can reduce that, and it can also be, um, that can also save you from flying out of the vehicle and breaking your body. Mm. A lot of people end up disabled because of these types of incidents, no? So it's basically emphasizing the use of seatbelts in a, in a fun and engaging way. The, the seat belts is really your, your, your best chance at um, remaining safe in a vehicle because anything can go wrong. I mean, vehicles are mechanical objects. I mean, you could check your vehicle before leaving. You could check the lights, brakes, everything you could check. And, and the vehicle is running perfectly fine uh, when you depart your, your, your home. But on the road, something can go wrong. You could get a bloat. Um, you know, some other mechanical failure could occur and you could lose control of that vehicle, right? Um, but having your seatbelt on is going to increase your chances of survival when sure. you're in the vehicle, right? Sure. So it is important that you wear your seatbelt. Interesting, the importance of seatbelt, um, you know, um, recalling um, all the RTAs, fatalities that happened, right. you know, and, you know, a lot of um, deaths could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. just, just, just recalling, recapping, I won't be specific to anyone but recapping of all uh, RTs, fatalities, a lot of deaths could have been prevented. So it's important that um, road users, uh, in particular drivers, use their seatbelt. I, I mean, that, that leads me to, to, want to ask. I, I know that you, know, you, you hit the checkpoint, the traffic officer is there, the police officer is there, you put down your seatbelt. You know, I could easily take off my seatbelt as soon as um, mm -hmm. I, I finish from the checkpoint. So. How are we? How are we hoping to to reduce that kind of attitude? So again, it goes back to education. That is mm -hmm. the foundation because we are trying to let the general public understand that doing such a thing is to your own detriment, yeah. right? Um, I can tell you um, from my experience at the department when I was a junior officer, I had an experience where several actually, but this one in particular, we we had a checkpoint. Um, the vehicle came, stopped. We politely asked the, the driver and passenger to put on their seatbelt. They reluctantly did so, and they drove off. Not even three minutes or five minutes after um, a vehicle that was coming from the opposite direction said, hey, guys, there is an accident down the road. We quickly responded, and that same was the vehicle. same vehicle. Everybody flew out the vehicle because they took off their seatbelt, right? And so it can happen. And so it is difficult to manage uh, something like that, uh, and we find that the best way is to ensure that um, we, we educate the people and let them understand the importance of having their seat belt because we can enforce and we can enforce, but if it is not you know, um, ingrained in their minds, then it is going to be futile. Yes, and w that's why we always try to emphasize that road safety is a shared responsibility. I mean, we can do our part mm -hmm. to, to the best of our abilities, mm -hmm. But if the public and the road users don't meet us halfway, then it then it won't be it won't be working the way we plan because mm -hmm. we can't be with everybody in their cars when they're traveling. We can't be with all the pedestrians walking mm -hmm. beside them, mm -hmm. and that's why it's up to you to take responsibility and realize the bigger picture, mm -hmm. right? And that's 
allowing you to reach safely to your destination and being safe and considerate so that other road users around you can be safe while using the road. No? But it's always communication. We need, to, we need to work with each other to try and have patience mm -hmm. so we can try to, we, we all have a, try to reach to our families safe and so. No? Mm -hmm. um, how can a civilian uh, help you by monitoring? So if I see something, where can I call or who do I talk to if, if you know, maybe there's somebody that I suspect is drinking mm. and driving or an accident happened on the road, who do I call? So we have a very good relationship with the general public. Um, we get a lot of complaints to our Facebook page. And um, as Ms. Acasio mentioned, we have an excellent PR person. Um, she relays all the concerns to us immediately and we address them immediately. Um, we have uh, bus operators who they contact us as well. You know, when they see certain things on the road, mm -hmm. uh, our office numbers, you know, you could easily go to our website. You will get all of our contact information there. Um, we, you can also um, leave a comment um, or a concern on our website. Um, the website is going to be officially launched. Um, so that is something that is in the pipeline. Um, so you'll be, the public will be hearing more about, uh, about that. But you can go um, on the website right now. You could just Google Department of Transport. The, w the website is going to appear, and you can start to utilize it. Um, and so those are uh, our main ways of communicating right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I want, to, I want to get into your, into your uh, road safety jingle, um, but can you talk to us about future campaigns? What are you going to do now that the schools are opening back up? So definitely we want to get back on track with the school visits mm -hmm. because that, that's something that we... We always try to do from time to time. We would, we would make presentations to the primary schools and both the high schools as well. No? And like I said, our areas of um, concentration would be the corridors. So we will try to do more visits uh, to schools on the coastal highway and as the, as the year progresses to schools on the northern highway as well. But we also do schools, other schools around the country as long as we have the time and com can accommodate it. So we are planning to do that we be and we are also planning to distribute toolkits mm -hmm. because road safety is a part of the primary school curriculum, not the HFLE. Road safety is a part of the curriculum that, that was implemented with the Ministry of Education because we also partner with them, right? And we are also planning various uh, commercials, various infomercials, mm -hmm. like uh, Christmas we did our first one under the project and that was a video talking about being safe on the road and focusing on different things especially motorcycle drivers like we were talking about earlier, right? Because like Mr. Castillo rightfully said, the motorcycle riders are really, are really just moving very recklessly these days. And sometimes they say that the motorists don't respect them, but mm -hmm. sometimes they, con they conduct themselves in a way that is very reckless and inconsiderate when it mm -hmm. comes to when it comes to other road users no you need to overtake on the proper side of the road so we will also be doing campaigns that focuses on that mm -hmm. uh distracted driving speeding and again wearing your seatbelt through our social media page mm -hmm. and through video commercials no? mm -hmm. so this is this particular campaign the the jingle is part of your media Campaign. Yes, that's part of the, the component known as the road user education and awareness mm -hmm. component under the project. So I think we're, we're ready to, to um, launch the jingle. Yes, Daryl tell me yes. So um, from the road safety project, wear your seat belt. Yes, man. All yes, right. What is your traffic, man? <laughs> so. This is a message from the Belize Road Safety hey. Initiative. Where your seat belt, locky. Where your seat belt, locky. Where your seat belt, wear it, lock it. Where your seat belt, lock it. Better to be safe, better to be safe than sorry, than sorry. Uh. Wearing your seat belt reduces your chance of death by 75 percent. Just open your eyes, you must realize this life is a I don't know about you, but I love my life And I don't wanna be responsible for killing my friend uh, 
need of my family So best you get that right So before anything happens best you get that way Where your seat back Lock it Where your seat back Lock it Where your seat back Wear it Lock it Where your seat back Lock it Where your seat back Lock it Where your seat back Wear it Lock it Technology is ubiquitous and it's transforming how, when and where we work. Fulltech Systems is placing award-winning devices in the hands of information workers, allowing them to work without compromise in a world without wires, to innovate, create and to maximize productivity anytime, anywhere. Satisfying the needs of the desk-centric remote and field worker and every other worker in between. We are providing the industry's best devices to businesses going through the process of digital transformation. Partner with us today to provide the solutions that will allow your employees to work effectively and efficiently to enhance your customers' experience. Fulltech Systems, your technology center, where you'll come for the price, but stay for the service.
if it continue the way it is going right now, you would be surprised to see what will happen in the next 10, 15 years. We might have nothing left. And you know what? The Guatemala and they could go back home. Where do we have to go? This is our home. We have nowhere to go. So we need, definitely, we need some help. back and if you're joining us right now we're getting our second segment for this morning started and we're shifting gears and we are speaking we we're speaking about inspirational promotions which is an organization that was created by two brothers uh, which uh, is aiming to assist uh, children who are less fortunate in several different areas and joining us in our studio is one of the co-founders of Inspirational Promotions. We have uh, Mr. Edmund Stein. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so for our viewers who are not aware, and they should be, <laughs> but they're not aware, um, what is Inspirational Promotions? Well, Inspirational Promotions is a spring-off from Inspiration Arts, which was an organization started by my brother, Brian Dina. You know, he, along with Paji, who was one of the elders from the area, you know, he used to make bead chain and so on for the um, Rasta guys and so on. So he taught Brian how to do it, and Brian took it to another level. He started to use co coconut, started to use bamboo, started to use cocoon and making the small Belize mops and making chains, doing arts. Right. You know, and from there, we used to always go to the workshop. And our, our first project actually was me bringing in my uncle and my aunt to come and visit the area. And they sponsored us a vice, sponsored us a drimmel, mm -hmm. gave us some money to get some goods and go to to, to um, across the border to get some beads and so on. And then we started to recruit all the kids from the area and put them to work. And then I, I, I used to go to UB. I didn't have money to go to school at, at that time, you know. So I used to like take the stuff up there and try to sell it, you know, in, in Valentine's and Mother's Day and Father's Day and try to get orders and mm -hmm. be able to make money to go to school. Mm -hmm. And we, Brian and I sat down one day and said, you know what, we need to look at what's going on in, in the area. And we noticed that everybody have talent, but they didn't know how to make money off their talent. So we did a small case study at the time which everything from school that I learned, I try to apply it when, I, when I'm at home. Right? So I learned <laughs> to do this. Cool. That's the point, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, we went and we did a case study and we found out that there's great talent around us. Like all the guys around us had amazing talent, but they just didn't know how to capitalize off it. And those who were making some money off it, they didn't know how to keep the money to reinvest it and have their, have their business grow. So um, this is where Inspiration Arts came up because we realized that there were a lot of young kids that needed to be trained from the young. It's harder for us to get through to the older guys. We always try to talk to them, you know, but some of them are just, you know, they're, they're far gone. So it's, it's hard for us to kind of bring them back. So we, we decided to focus on the young kids. And Brian used to work right here at Channel 5. So he, he had a, a guy come in that was homeless. And he really wanted to trim this guy before he came on air, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, he came home and said, Brian, hey, Edmund, I mean, there's a lot of people probably in this situation that you know, need a haircut, need to go back to school. Uh, we, we, he just encouraged me to, to go out and we started to go and try to see if we get help. Mm -hmm. And the guys from the area started bringing their clippers, you know, the females started coming out, Miss Mangar, and all the ladies from the area started bringing Johnny Cake and so on, you know, and so you could feed the kids. We went to Atlantic Insurance, so the first person gave us some pencils at that time, well, it was in 2009, wow. 2009, 2010, yeah. And they, the, first set, the first day we did 50 boys, and we, up to last year, I had the list of boys still in my wallet, you know, with all the names, and all those guys are big guys now, older guys now, and they come back and volunteer to the event now, you know, since it has grown. And we've been able to bless a lot of kids. The event has grown now. To, we do about 350 kids now throughout a two days event. And um, it's, everybody's just being blessed by it. It's a true community event. And everybody comes out and just have a festive moment. And everybody enjoys the day. So that's, that's the trimming drive, how inspiration, arts, and inspiration promotions came about. You said 2009. So you've been yeah. operating since 2009. Yeah, since 2009. 2009, we had like 125 boys the first, the first year. And we did it upstairs of her mom's um, mm -hmm. place because we were just building the area and she allowed us to do it up there. So that was like, the first, first year we had. We got a bus from the city council at the time. They allowed us to pick up some of the kids. You know, we went to Genosha Boulevard. That's Brian right there. You know, he's <laughs> such an amazing guy, you know, has a big heart. And they, we, we've been able to grow. You know, we're able to inject more events into it. We did a Christmas party with over 500 kids. You know, we, we partnered with Plow, which is a Port, Port Loyola organization for women. And we've been able to do much more work. You know, we give away some pantry in the area. We're able to do an Easter, 
Easter program. Like today, we're going to give away some Easter baskets. So, so we wish we had for everybody, right? We just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's based on what we get, we, we give away, you know, but, you know, the, the, the organization has been able to grow. And now we've been blessed to partner with Plow again to bring to the community a resource center that, you know, it's, it has been our dream because the last event we had, we gave away school bags, was during COVID. And we realized, you know, through our, our meetings and so on, that the school bags was not the, the great need, you know, at the time. And I, I put myself back to where I was at that phase in my life, you know, as, as a kid in primary school, we were some of the poor kids, you know what I mean? We never have internet at home. We never have computers at home. You know, mm -hmm. I, we barely even have textbook. We used to share textbook with the guys in class, yeah. right? So um, knowing that, I, I know I would have been one of those kids that would, would have been behind by two years right now. You know, and I'm, I always try to excel in school. So, I mean, what if there was a kid like me that wanted to excel but couldn't excel because of the circumstances? So that, that's the reason why we made that plea at that time on Channel 5 to try to get help. And thankfully, IDB, you know, they, they heard us and they were able to sponsor us some of the computers. But now we still need help. I mean, we, we still need to get um, the antivirus. We still need to get uh, a Microsoft suite right. set up. We need a stronger internet because we're sharing with so much um, spaces. Um, we, we need resources like papers and so on to print stuff because people always say you charge a fee, but my mom couldn't give me a dollar to go to the spot to go and print for school. I, we didn't have that money. That dollar could have buy a bread. You know what I mean? So, so that's the kind of situation that these kids are in. And um, I feel it because I'm one of those kids. You know, I, got, I was fortunate enough to, to stock it out and, and stay in school. You know, so we try to encourage these young people to stay in school also because I believe that through education, you know, they get other opportunities. So um, that's, that's, that's why this resource center is so meaningful to us and it's so mm -hmm. important for us to try to get it going. So by the time Easter, uh, Easter break is out, we want these kids to be able to go there and do their school work. You know, the ones that have to connect to school, try to connect to school, and, and we try to see we use it for the best as we could. Um, and and how, what's the um, process like, you know, um, in, in terms of uh, getting the actual resources to the children and working in the community? I mean, it's, it's difficult for mm -hmm. us because we, we, we're still stereotyped, you know, mm -hmm. we're from the South Side, ghetto people, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's, it's really hard for people to come and help, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of people that have the money, have the resources, and they wouldn't think to help us, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it's the people from the community, the people from the ghetto that comes out and help us and, and get things going, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's, it's always heartfelt for me because whenever we go and we help people, we realize the need because we went one day and gave pantry for Christmas because we said no, we're going we're, we're to give away some, some baskets that have in everything for Christmas in there. Cake, everything, right? They say, go and make a meal, right? Give them a big chicken and so on, you know, some rice, some flour and beans. And when we went and delivered this stuff to these people, they were sending us to their neighbors down the street because they don't have nothing to eat and take out some, you know what I mean? Take out some for them and take some for the neighbors. Those are... Those are the things that keep us going. You know, we realize that, that, there, that there, there's so many good people around and so many people in bad circumstances, so many single parents and single parents, you see the murders happening. I mean, all these guys, they have kids, they have wives, they, they, they're left behind. You know, some of them, were, most of them were breadwinners for the family. Mm -hmm. the, the mothers have young kids sometimes. Some, 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 sometimes they don't have the education level to get employable, you know. So it's like, there's a lot of circumstances surrounding. They have to leave kids at home by, at home by themselves. So. There's a lot of societal ills that, you know, we see every day, you know, we're around the community and we, we really try to see how bit by bit we could chunk off s s some of the burden that, that's on these family structures. So, so tell me how we went from haircuts to school resources to um, providing other um, uh, entities for the community. Because you started off with the haircuts. Yeah. So how did you kind of transition into... All right, we are the knapsacks and school packages and stuff for kids. Well, I mean, it just reacted to the need of the people, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, we're in the community every day. We live around the community. You know, we are around people that need, you know, and they, they speak to us. We see them. We are, understand the need, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just for us to say, you know what, if, if we were able to do this, then probably we're able to do more if we try even harder. We try to reach out. And it's, it's difficult. I mean, we write to a lot of people. We reach out to a lot of people. We don't get responses. We, I mean, we try to go and see them. Brian and I both work, so it's hard for us now. First, you know, we didn't really work. We were going to school. Brian was doing, you know, he's around. So we both have our families now, so we have to deal with that. So um, we're not rich people, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's really difficult trying to find the support. That's why it's important for us to get platforms like Plat Channel Farm, I mean, Channel 5. You guys are amazing. I mean, you guys give us the opportunity to have people hear us and hear our stories and, and um, give us calls and try to reach out to the people. We never ask for money. And we, we never go around and ask anybody for any money. Any money that's used is from us. We raise money just among ourselves. 
But people give us the items that, that they want to give to the people, and we mm -hmm. make sure it's delivered to the people that really need it. So um, the resources, the backpacks, the, the books, the supplies, everything that comes from um, people that just want to help or organizations that want well, to yeah, help? Yeah, um, for the last mm -hmm. couple of years, all right, the first, couple, the first time we got uh, backpacks was because of Ms. Dion Chamberlain. She was at BTL. Mm -hmm. You know, she called us up, me and Brian, we went in, you know, had a meeting with us, and they were able to bless us with their school bags. She left BTL after a while, but then we got a connection with B&E Trust. And mm -hmm. then B&E Trust, um, for the past couple of years, have been providing school bags to, to us. And uh, we, we, they, they pay the money to ENR. We're going to pick out the bags, the most reasonable ones, you know, try to get mm -hmm. as much as possible for the kids. Um, last, this year, we had uh, a little assistance from Aspire for Greatness. They gave us, I think, about 50 bags, mm -hmm. right, um, to, to give away to the school. But again, I mean, that wasn't the, the biggest need at the time, but it was still a blessing for those kids yeah. because they had to take home the school packages and we were able to have them put the school packages in a school bag mm -hmm. and then take it home. Or otherwise, it would be in, like, all around the house, maybe the books get tear, have a libra, throw milk on your book, whatever it is, you know, so... Yeah. It still helped, you know, it was still a, a great, a great help. I'll tell you something, you say that it might not be what they needed at the time, but a kid that doesn't go to school with mm. a paper, with a pencil, mm. they're handicapped for the rest of the day. Yeah. And even during COVID when they had to settle for laptops and so they needed something to, yeah, to write right. on. So I think the effort is, is there's no small deed that was undone, right? Um, uh, so the transition to, to, to school, uh, now to... to technology yeah. right so what has that been like well i have some great friends you know i have some guys around me that we all went to school together you know some mm -hmm. of them advanced their knowledge in taiwan and able to study you know because of scholarships and so on and these guys really want to give back and when this resource center happened i, I didn't even know that i had some colleagues that work with me that were, were passionate about doing it related um uh te technology related mm -hmm. programs so so now um I, we're able to do it in a formal setting, you know, so we, we're trying to see how we could have some um, video editing, you know, skills being teached to, to people, mm -hmm. you know, people could learn to do some programming, because Belize is a, is a country that has a lot of space for, for programs. I mean, we, we're primitive in a lot of processes, so it's, it's really a lot of space for young people to get in there, technology savvy, and go and help businesses to enhance their, their services. Mm -hmm. So these guys are coming to do that, you know, and also, there's some people that are trying to find jobs. You know, they didn't have a computer at home. They want to write a job letter, need a resume, you print it out, that kind of thing, references. You know, so having a resource center like this will definitely, you know, fill that space. You know, I, I could remember trying to find how I would print out a job letter for care, you know, yeah. to try to apply for your job. I mean, it, it may seem simple to a lot of people that have the resources, but there's a lot of people that really don't have these resources. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that, that, that's why it's so impactful for us to be able to provide mm -hmm. this. Because I know that I was once in the, in the position, you know, and I know there's a lot of people like me out there that really want to be somebody and really want to, you know, try to elevate, but then it's, it's just hard, you know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, you know, having started in, in 2009, uh, talk, uh, you know, I, uh, that means that the first, you know, set of boys that you were working with or kids, they've, they're now pretty much grown up. Yeah. Uh, so what's the process been like watching people grow up that you've, that you've helped um, and, and, w and some of the ways in which maybe some of them do give back? Yeah, well, um, I, I could just say, for example, most of the guys that, that come to the event, that, well, all, the, all the guys that were at the event when they were young and they live in the area, all them come out to volunteer. Mm -hmm. Like all them, they come and cut here, they come and clean the yard, they come and help us set up the tent. Mm -hmm. You know, so everybody comes out and volunteer. And we, we had a system in place, Bern and I, when I used to live in Belize City at the time, I live in Belmopan now. But I, I mean, I, because of moving away, I, I lost a relationship with some of the young, young guys and then, you know, some of them got carried away into the, you know, the, 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 the gang world and so on. You know, that's, that's our fight. Our, our fight has always been trying to get these kids out of, getting into that mindset of just being in a gang and, and have them understand that there, there's more to it than, than just being in a gang. So that, that has always been our fight. So the transition, now we're looking at how we have affected these kids and, and show them that we could be positive and still make money, or positive and still survive, positive and, you know, because when I, when I grew up as a kid, all I saw was the drugs dealers. And, and I saw them with big chain, big vehicle, nice cars, nice, nice house, you know, and everything. And that was our icon because, boy, I want to be like that. I want to live that yeah. kind of lifestyle and could buy what I want and so on. So there's a program that I've written to my master's that I've taken for um, project management that deals with providing vocational opportunities for kids at a young age. And, and we're trying to get into primary schools and high schools so these kids can learn and know from a young age that if you drive a tow head, you can make money. If you learn how to do construction, you can make money. If you learn how to drive a boat, you can learn make money. Learn a trade and a if you, Yeah, if you learn how to do a forklift, you can make money. 
you know so those are the type of things that we're trying to instill from a young age so that these young people get industrious the, the only way we could do this because a lot of them don't, don't like school so they're not cut out for school mm -hmm. you know some of them they, 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 yeah. learn, they, they don't really want to learn nothing but to go out and work and make money so 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 that's that's the reason why I, I you know i took it upon myself make my thesis be a project in this nature and hopefully we get it funded because this is what I want to spend my life. I mean, I want to spend my life showing these young people that we could use the things around us and, and use them in the right way and be able to survive for ourselves and feed our families. Because everybody right now, anybody pick up one right now for go rob somebody, you know, for their man, for their family, and think about it. Yeah. They, they think about they pick then they home, they're like, boy, I buy this, me pick near them, I have a good Easter or something, you know? So it's always an Easter or a Christmas or something these guys are going towards. So we need to find meaningful employment. And how, yeah. how, how do we do that? How do we do that? We have to train up our people how to think. Because it's just like slaving in the mind. You know, we need to free up our minds and understand how we need to think positively, think the right way. And then the, the right energies develop. We do the right effort. You know, we, we become a bit spiritual because we need some level of spirituality coming from where we come from, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a balance. So with all that, we're able to show these young people that there is an opportunity for you to be somebody mm -hmm. just by starting off, by staying, staying in school, being encouraged, having somebody to talk to, sometimes having somebody to talk to for these young people mm -hmm. would make, make a difference. I, I remember one time, I, I told the story several times before when I came on this air, but it was always impactful to me. There was this one kid giving a lot of trouble at the event, just making a lot of fuss. And I pulled him one side. You know that kid was from a children's home. We always try to reach out to a children's home every event that we do. And he told me he saw his dad kill his mom in front of his face. And he wanted, wanted to get big, so he go back and kill his dad. For, for his mom, and that, that was the pain that this young, that this child was was bearing at, at the time, you know. And Brian, and I were able to intervene with him, talk to him, talk to him, give him a football, kind of like like football. And we gonna look for him at the time, and he was not there. I was like, what's going on? The man stopped get trouble, and one of family must take her in, and now he's you know he's going to school and everything, you know. So like, you never know what these kids are going through. That's how we try to provide food for them, snacks, everything, so that when they come there, they feel comfortable and everything, right? Because you never know someone they're hungry. They come to the event, you know, so you're sitting on the face, they're hungry, they're holding their belly, right? So I'm one of those kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we need to try to provide opportunities for them. So this is something that you do all year, all year, all year long, or do you um, have um, seasonal events for them? Well, we mm -hmm. want to do it all year long. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We, we want to grow to a point where we could just be a hub, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and just have things happening. Because I, I do a lot of sports. I used to be in sports a lot. You know, we want to be able to grow to us. We have these kids doing sports. Every time it's summer, my father was yeah. so said, I'll let pick me just run up on the street. You know, there's nobody coming in and say, Boy, I'm gonna try and put me pick me for those something. Yeah. You know, get him yeah. a lead jersey, your lead boots, why can't he say, Go kick some ball, you know, you'll get a lead medal, whatever it is. We need to do that. I mean, we need to look deeper into what's going on, you know what I mean? Go on the ground. I mean, the people that are supposed to be doing it, I really want to encourage them to do it. There's a lot of people went to school with me, all of we going to school together. So then they're much better than me right now, you know, much smarter than me. Come on, come help me pick me, you know what I mean? We, we the day, you know what I mean? So let's let's do it. So that <laughs> I, I no, I, I, I completely agree. I wanted to, to ask about well, since it's a seasonal uh, back to school Easter as I imagine Christmas. Yeah. Um <laughs> so do you see uh, an increase in the in the kids that, that are coming every single time you do an yeah, event. Every, every so year we do the event, we come. Well, we did 300 ads this year. Right? I mean, 300 was wow. a target two years ago. You what know, was, what's, the most, what, what's the number of the most kids that have? I think it's like 325, between 325, 350. And let me just say this, right? Mm -hmm. Every event we've ever had, we had exact for everybody, meaning we could feed everybody, mm -hmm. everybody, and it's always exact. Like, it's crazy. I mean, from the Christmas party, we had a Christmas party, we had more kids come than we anticipated. And so the council came and give us some gift and the exact amount of gift they bring, down for their picnic. So I mean like it's so it's so amazing and so inspirational. So we have a name with inspiration yeah. and promotions, right? The way we do it. Uh, no, so, no, we I have mean, money that just happened. Three hundred and twenty five kids and how many devices have you received from the IDB? Uh, we received twelve devices from the IDB. Put screen to it, so I'll thank <laughs> you. Yeah, Top of the line. Yeah, up to the time thing. Le Lenovo. <laughs> <laughs> right, but but God, 12, God but 12 yeah. laptops yeah. for 325 kids is, is not. No, I mean, um, but then they say, this is big because this 12 computers, and we could, not everybody will have homework the same day, so we have mm -hmm. to rotate. But just having access to the most urgent kids, one of them got SBA. I remember, do my SBA, I used to go to my auntie house for a free tongue. Mm -hmm. And I have to wait till she can finish using the computer. Then I go try to do my thing. I have to ride back to Faber's. Mm -hmm. right? So I don't know who are you in this situation. <laughs> like, I mean, at the time, but you know, for, for pay, because sometimes you pay the computer, I would think dollar, hour, something, two dollars, or something to that extent. You pay mm -hmm. for printing and so on. 
That if I do this, I could have shot you a long way. You could have buy rice or eat flour or eat pork bread or something. We eat up, right? So that's the most important thing <laughs> to eat, right? So, yeah. so um, for, for kids like me that really want to do it, those are the ones that we provide the space for, right? And also, we're going to rotate it so that they have turns. You know, you have a space for the time on the computer. No, no YouTube and the plane that can do your work, and then you have to take what you want. Right? <laughs> so, you know, you have, you have to set rules and, you know, that type of thing. But it's still something. It's still a start. We would want a hub like this in every area because we have kids in Genosha Boulevard need this right now. Kids back off Abbas Road, you know, the deeper part need this right now, right? More to the south side because some of the kids don't link up. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't like to go in the other area because of all the turf war and a lot of mm -hmm. the confusion that's happening. So they, all those things you have to be conscious of also while dealing with this social program. So we don't get anybody into any problem that they don't want to, right? Mm -hmm. So all that. Well, uh, we are just about out of time. Yeah. But uh, mm. before uh, we go, are there any final um, thoughts that you'd want to leave with our viewers? Um, yeah. Just to, to, to say about the program or, um, or perhaps future plans that you might have? Well, we mean equipment for big. <laughs> <laughs> so the main idea is behind this thing, we need help to get this thing going, man. We need a good internet, right, so the kids could share up, right? We definitely need to get the Microsoft suite for them so you can do homework, whatever, or a paid version of it that we don't have to go through no problem, right? We definitely need antivirus for the computer, right? And we need resources, you know, paper, the book companies, so because sometimes the kids don't have their resources, so we won't be able to provide that to them. Right? We also need, we we'll try to give at least type in for somebody if we go there every evening to take care of the kids. You know, mm -hmm. at least small money for the day for somebody. Because we ask people to volunteer, but these people have needs too. We we'll volunteer whole day, go home broke, they should starve. I don't think that makes sense. People are encouraged to do it in a way, yeah. right? We call it the poor people. So at the end of the day, we, I mean, those are the things that we really, really need right now. We're still, right now we're planning the back to school drive again. We're going to do it really, really big. So I have a shout out to AP because um, we might do a big Faber Joe day and we have some big artists from Faber Joe that have to try to highlight and give them a spotlight, a platform to show the people the talent they have, right? So mm -hmm. we're going to do it real, real big. For, <laughs> we, we, we say it big, right? It's like not expensive. I'm pretty sure you have big. Yeah, so <laughs> Black Party style for the Fabers, right? We need to do that in, in conjunction with the Back to School Drive this year because this is going to be the 10th one that we're doing this year. It should have been last year. We, don't, we, we never count that. We just give away the bags, right? Mm -hmm. We never have the event. So we want to have the kids excited. We need help for that. And even one thing gets sponsored for that yet, but we are faithful that it's going to be, it's going to, yeah, it's going to happen, right? And um, just stop, man, please reach out. I was a big up Brian. Brian is working hard for his family. He couldn't make it today. You know, he should have been here with me, right? I want to large up Port Loyal Organization for Women. They have been gracious to us, mm -hmm. afford us their space. They have incorporated us into most of their events. And even with the, with the, Chris, um, the Easter basket that we're giving away today, they were the ones that were able to secure all this stuff, we just help mm -hmm. pack it up, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's, a, it's a true blessing, and I really hope that the Fabajo people feel blessed and stay blessed, because we are here for you guys, and we're going to make it happen, right? So that's it. Um, thank you so much for, for having us all the time. Large upon yourself, right? <laughs> five. Miss Marlene all the time for allowing us to come on, right? So yeah. enough blessings, right? Thank you. Thank you so much, Virgo. And we hope that um, you do get the funding that you seek, the yeah, research man, that you seek. You, and, you know, if you're out there and you want to reach out to, to, um, to Edmund, how can they reach out, reach out to you? Well, my, my number is 614-6710, right? Yeah. I'm one fan brand number too because... <laughs> sure. I need, I need to both brand, right? So 614-6710. 6710 for Edmund Stain and then Brian number. He did, he did hurry, he did Google I it. Heard, I got it eight times. 614 614 5434. 5434. You don't know your own Brian number? Uh, just the seven. <laughs> but all right, you can always contact um, Mr. Stain or Brian and um, see how you can help out and reach out to them, right? Um, but with that, we're going to take our another break and when we come back, hot cross buns. You know who my hot cross buns? All right, well, we all know if we had cross buns. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Download the Smart Stream app on the Android Play Store and create your account to get access to movies and stream at home or on the go. Prepaid customers can purchase regular data packages or get a discounted rate on a special smart stream package 
by dialing 7737. Postpaid customers will be billed monthly. Never miss a movie again with Smart Street. Galenia Hospital, located in Cancun, Mexico's premier tourism destination, is a state-of-the-art healthcare facility that provides highly specialized medical services. We are Quintana Roo's biggest private hospital with board-certified doctors and staff. Some of our services include Cat Lab, Adult Intensive Care Unit, Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, Emergency Rooms, Operating Theaters, Ambulance Services, and more. We are a medically accredited hospital by JCI, Accreditation Canada International, and General Health Council providing extraordinary care in every specialty from our cardiology department to our neurology center we are focused on treating the entire person body mind and spirit contact us at medical tourism at hospitalgalenia.com or visit our website at www.hospitalgalenia.com come to galenia hospital in cancun for a truly personal medical care experience. Your life just got a lot less complicated with Belize Bank Contactless MasterCard Debit Card. Introducing our standard debit and MasterCard Platinum Debit Cards. Now you can make purchases anywhere MasterCard is accepted with one tap, pay and go. Your contactless card never has to leave your hands, especially in these times. And your card is embedded with multiple layers of security. Platinum card holders get to enjoy extra benefits like price protection, purchase protection, trip inconvenience, and luggage protection, just to name a few. Start enjoying a cashless lifestyle today with the Belize Bank. If you're looking for low cost television advertising, have we got a deal for you? Advertise on Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community. Use our Daily Classifieds to recruit employees, promote specials, promote your products or services, promote a business opportunity, increase traffic to your website, and advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you save valuable time and money. Call us today at 223-0146 or visit us at our offices on Pony Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not try. Won't even try. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gonna try. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gonna try. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. People die every day. I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. I'ma find my own way. I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. It's okay. I'll wait. Even good people make mistakes. I don't wanna realize when it's too late. Drinking and driving is never safe. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. If you're drinking and driving, I'm not going. I'm not going with ya. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gon' try. Been drinking all night. Feeling so high. Better not drive. Ain't gon' try. Brianna, what do you want to be when you grow? Hmm. Mommy, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor. That's great, honey. You have to study hard then and get good grades. 
Yes, Mommy, I will. Mommy, why do the neighbors have to play the music so loud? Every day, people are affected by noise. Noise, like loud music, is not a concern for those making the noise because they are not the ones being affected. It is usually the vulnerable that is impacted the most by noise pollution, such as the sick, the elderly, and the young. That is why the Department of the Environment is asking you to be considerate of your neighbors. Be mindful that your actions can have lasting effects and know that noise pollution is an offense under the pollution regulation. And we are back with the bakers and owners of Blue. And we have with us in studio Einar Marin, who is the owner of Blue, and Renel Burgos, who is a baker at the uh, bakery. So today, they are going to be teaching us all about hot cross buns. If you're a traditional Easter person, you will know that this is the season for hot cross buns. Um, but I have been told explicitly that this is not hot cross buns. This is Hot cross buns with a twist. Uh, welcome, uh, Einar and Renel. Thank you Thank so you. much for uh, joining us and teaching our audience. So uh, before we get started, Einar, tell us a little bit about your bakery, Blue, where it's located, and what you serve there. Uh, good morning. Um, first, of, thanks, guys, for having me here. Yeah. Um, so Blue by Einar Marin is located uh, in, on 1048 Bachelor Avenue in the West Landiver area. We're open. Tuesdays to Fridays, 7 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 8 to 3.30, and on Sundays, 8 to 1. So that's our opening hours. For this week, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to open from today till Thursday, and Thursday we're going to close at 3, and we're going to close Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and be back Tuesday. next week, Tuesday, yeah. You don't open on Mondays? We don't open on Mondays. At no. all? Yeah, we take a little rest that day. That is Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, can you uh, tell us a little bit about what Blue by Mar by Einar, sorry, has to offer um, in your bakery? Um, well, at the bakery we have croissants. We have our lemon pie, our strawberry cheesecake, chocolate croissants, our ham and cheese croissants, um, the plain croissants. On the weekends we have the egg and bacon. Yeah, those are the croissants. We have... Um, we have different types of croissants. We have brioche breads, um, collages. We have conchas. Uh, these are lemon pie croissants, pre, um, pre cooked. Okay. So that's how they looked. Um, and then we have all our individuals, which are mini desserts. So if you don't want a whole cake, you could get a miniature size one. Uh, that's some, I know sometimes <laughs> you have a craving. You know, these are tiny cakes. Yeah, it's our, and there's our strawberry cheesecake croissant, the donuts. Um, and you know, and you always um, put your own little twist on things, right? Because you, yeah. you are a um, you're a professionally trained uh, pastry chef. Yeah. Um, um, but then you, but uh, you also you put your twist on a lot of classic recipes. Right? Yeah. Uh, try to we try to do traditional stuff, but um, elevate it like tres leches. We we have our own tres leches cake. Um, but we try to elevate it a, a bit more now. And you put cuatro leches. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So that's, that's what we do. We try to upper the bar a little bit now. Okay. And that's what we're going to be doing a bit of today, right? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So All right, so let's get started. So I guess Renelle is going to be teaching us how to do hot cross buns yeah. with a twist. So yeah. it's not just hot cross buns. So what do we have here uh, on our TV kitchen setup? Well, what we're going to do today is this. the hot cross buns is a traditional one. The only difference is that we are using a brioche dough. Okay. which a brioche dough is like a highly fat content bread. 
It has milk, egg, and butter. Okay. So that's a bit different than So what. it's like even more. It, yeah. All the carbs. More, yeah, all yeah. the carbs. All the carbs. Calories, than so. your regular one. Yes. So, yeah. so we're going to start off with the flour and all the dry ingredients first. Mm -hmm. So this is like a pure, like, indulge yourself kind so of treat. So flour, <laughs> flour goes in first. Yeah. Then. We have the salt, the sugar, and our, our spice mix. Okay. What's in the spice mix? Can in you spice tell us? mix. <laughs> well. We have nutmeg, we have anise, we have cinnamon, um, we have a little bit of clove. Okay. Yeah, so it's just a mixture of up to seven spices mm -hmm. that we pre-mix and have it in, to just to give it a pop of flavor. Okay. So, uh, Renel, can you tell us a little bit about what you do at uh, Blue by Inner? Um, well, we usually work during the night and <laughs> we prepare what's um, a croissant, um, brioche, um, we'll be making this um, hot crust buns today, right. and um, so the that's dry most of the stuff we do there. All right. Yep. So most of the breads I will be doing um, at Blue. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the dry ingredients are in. You have to mix that yeah. before you add. So that. we give it a lead mix just to have everything dispersed. <sighs> so all the dry stuffs are here, mm -hmm. and um, then goes the rest of the stuff. And so you guys said that you usually work in a, that you usually work in the night for to prepare the stuff for the next day. Yeah. 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 So everything is made fresh every day. We don't have breads from one day to the next. Mm. Um, you sell out. We on good days. Yes. <laughs> on good days we sell out. Okay. And, and what would you do with the with the breads that you don't sell? Um, we usually give it back um, to the community. To the okay. There's a local police substation in the area. Mm -hmm. um, also, there are a lot of um, homeless people. Mm -hmm. So we just try to find who, who needs it now and who would appreciate it more. All right. Yeah. So, right, what did you just put in there? Yeast? And um, yeah. We actually do put the milk inside the yeast. Mm -hmm. And then just wait a little while to, for it to activate. And um, once it's activated, then um, we pour it in. Okay, and so then you start mix the dry ingredients. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I will add yeast. Milk and yeast. I will add a pinch of sugar. What the sugar does is that yeast is a bacteria. What it needs for it in order to grow is um, a good temperature. It mm -hmm. prefers a warm temperature. And the sugar helps it because it's like, it wakes it up and it starts mm -hmm. eating. Now you have something to eat. So then it starts producing carbon dioxide, which is why bread ferments now at yeah. the end of the day. Alright, so the yeast and the milk are in. Yeah. Next. Then we give it a little mix as well. And like how much uh, what size serving does oh, this yes. is this gonna make? Like how many Oh this makes for fifteen. Fifteen? Alright. Yeah. How many cups flour? Um I'm not sure because <laughs> we don't we don't work <laughs> oh, in no, work with measure. Yeah, yeah, we work in grams because we try to have everything precise every time. Okay, so how many grams then? Um, those that's a very high <laughs> secret <laughs> message. Oh, it's all right. Oh, the one thing they can't tell with on TV. Yeah. Tell it off here. <laughs> okay, so the eggs are in. How many eggs? One egg. One egg. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, so how many would this make, you said? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen. Yeah. Alright. That is the, the, um, Average amount of serving that you do for your pastries um, for the day. For the day, um, we make like anywhere around 120 breads per day. 120, 150 days, 150 breads a day. But a popular one is is the donut. That's, a donut. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one that sells out the most. Okay. Yeah. So you add more milk once the dough is. Yeah. Um, with brioche, what you want to do is have more fatty content than milk mm -hmm. okay. because milk it doesn't apport, it doesn't um, give too much flavor. Okay. It's more of a just just so that the dough is wet enough and it gives a proper fermentation and when you bake it, it's soft. Huh? Okay. Yeah. How do you know when the dough is ready? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> 
have technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this is what happens this is, when this it's is what live. Happens when this is it's <laughs> we're really going to vlog here. Yes, we are. This is TV Kitchen. This is, and if you, and if you're like a, um, you know, if you're a home baker, I'm sure you can relate to this as well. <laughs> can you? Yeah, oh no, yes, for sure. Yes, it happens all the time? Yeah. I would I imagine so. <laughs> and the ones that they have at, at um, Blue by Inner are probably bigger. Yeah, we have some <laughs> bigger ones. That, so we, had, we brought this one because it's the smallest one we have. It's a two-man job now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So once the dough is ready, you add the butter. Yeah, we add the butter in three parts. Okay. okay. So what makes hot cross buns with a twist, the twist? Well, the brioche, it's actually the brioche. Just um, the flour. Yeah, just the brioche itself. The, mm -hmm. um, the eggs, the milk, and the and the butter. Because I don't think traditional recipes have all that. Yeah, because usually if you're making bread, it's just like the flour and the... Um, and whatever liquid you're yeah, using. Yeah, water. Water. Water, water yeah. yeah. And then this dough, it's very, very moist. So if you touch it, it's mm -hmm. gonna stick to your hands. Oh. And then you, you might think, oh, we have to add more, more flour. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. but, but there's just more work that you need to do. So you just have to keep kneading it yeah, you know, just, for it not to stick anymore? Yeah. Okay. So in school, we used to do this by hand. So it takes us like an hour and a half. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then. Until we finish bakery, then the chef says, oh, this is how you do the mixture, and it takes like five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. no? You know that song like something they do me with the mixing of the sugar and the butter? Yeah. So they tell me, mix the sugar and the butter so that it gets like that whipped yeah. texture. And I stay there for hours, they mix with a pot spoon. And then afterwards, and turn around, like, you could have just put it in the, um, in the, um, the mixer, the and it would yeah. be done in ten minutes. That must have been fatal to your whole psyche. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how long does it usually take to be done the, the um, dough before you add the butter? Like for five, three to five minutes. Okay. Yeah. So here we got ready to add the butter in. All right. So if you could... Can you show the, the, the yeah. viewers the butter, the batter, sorry? Do. So, okay. Which camera? Here. Yeah. It is pretty soft. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sticky. soft and it's sticky. Is that supposed to be? It's supposed to be like that, yeah. Okay. That's that's how our brioche dough usually is. Okay. So right now when you add the butter, it's gonna stick all around the oh. okay. all around the bowl. Okay. So remember viewers, that is what's supposed that's, yeah. to happen. Alright, so you said you add it in two parts. Yeah. Okay. And that does what? Um what well, it allows for the butter to completely be in the whole mixture and then the dough doesn't have to have that high fat content in once and when one go now it's easier yeah. for it to to be inside the, the dough itself. Okay. And so how long would you have to, um, how long does it take to prep and bake? Um, if you're a home baker, maybe like an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, like we already have, have an idea like what, what, what can go where now yes, quicker. Of course. And um, that's how it takes us like half an hour maybe. So this is our dough, yeah. So once we finish this, and this is after an hour. Voila, the magic of TV. An hour and a half fermentation. So you did this at 7? Yes, yeah, so we did 7 a.m. this morning. So right now you'll see how the difference so is So pretty. Look. I want to take it out today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm a, for those that know, I am a huge foodie and this is so cute. And I love it. So okay. you guys can help us round out the door right now. Yeah, it does. It can smell all the spices. It smells all yeah. the spices. I like that. Thank you, Shanice. I'm happy. So all the spices we have, we um, grate it by hand. Okay. Yeah. Because it has more flavor now. It has more. It's fresher yeah. than if you buy it pre-ground it. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. We, while he works on this, maybe we can start doing this. All right. Only well, yeah, we don't have where we can. You can get the big tray. Oh, maybe the big tray. Yeah. And just turn it around. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna roll it out? Yeah. So, yeah, we're so we'll it. we'll we're cut it up. It. And then you guys can Okay. Okay. Maybe you can turn it around. Okay. Okay, yeah. So this dough what, what you have to do with the dough is right now it's full of carbon dioxide. 
Uh, so that's after um, and he's already the yeah. race for about an hour and a half. He said. Yeah. Take all oh, the look at all the oh, bubbles! Look at that. Yeah. Take that all out. Yeah. Even when he's kneading it, it's you can smell the um yeah, the, yeah, the spices. The spices uh, Okay, so you're measuring now, but yeah. right scale. So each one weighs 50 grams. I think this one set because of the mixer. <laughs> the mixer is um, yeah. causing it to. Okay. Yeah. So we did 50 grams. And why we do this is because so, so we can have everything the same, and then uh, every, every, everything. Um, takes the same time to bake now. Mm -hmm. one, one isn't undercooked and one doesn't um, burn. So it's a whole process that we have to do. Okay. So how do I roll? So Or might Gavin start? Yeah. Right, yeah. I think <laughs> Gavin's a, a pro now. Yes, always, Gavin is a pro. I always watch his stories. Uh, <laughs> so what do, right. Gavin is a baker, right, hence yeah, the I, kitchen I, aid. Yes, okay. I have. Oh, I didn't switch <laughs> yeah. it. Yep. I was this years old when I found out that Gavin could be. Yeah, I'm slightly disappointed that I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, uh, although I, I admitted to April, like before we started, that I've only tried to make um, hot sauce on the one when I was off the hill. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. We have the dough here. And we just gently press down. Uh, okay. And come up. I'm gonna make it like how I make tortilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there we go. Yeah, mine's not look like that, dude. <laughs> not look like that. <laughs> I won't get it smooth <laughs> like that, and it's not working. It's it's a it's a, it's a lot of practice. So I think Renel Renel could tell you. I'm flattening it. Yeah. See, mine's need to look like that. Gently, gently, like yeah. it's brown. Yeah, this one is very nice. Very well. Is that ready? Um, so here, if we leave it like this, when you bake it, the bread is gonna come out all. Okay. So what we do is we put it inside itself. Okay. And then here, we just mm -hmm. press down a little and work our way up. Ah. Wow. Way up. And there we have it. Can I do another? <laughs> yes, you can do next time. <laughs> It's very fun. I want to uh, learn. Yeah, it's like play it all a bit. Okay. So he says fold it within itself. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And then. Okay. Oh, nope, it's not fully folded, but I'll get the hang of it. Right. And this dough is still really soft to work with. Yeah, see, it has all the butter, all the milk, all yes. the but it's still not sticking. It still doesn't stick. I down. like that. I like that a lot. This. Yay! Yeah, there we go. That one yeah, looks that good. looks nice. Good. Did it. It could come work for for last long. <laughs> yes, I'm certified <laughs> by Aner. <laughs> this one has a pocket. Yeah, this I would see this taking like an hour <laughs> to do in your kitchen by yourself. Right. And so, um, your so will these um cross ones be available at Blue as well? Well, we have them available this week, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. But okay. it's Thursday. Um, I think we're we're closed um, orders for Thursday already because we've already hit our max. Mm. So oh. we still have we have limited spots available for tomorrow. Right, so, so if you don't want to like go through <laughs> all of this, you can uh, learn your little recipe. Trial and error. You can just, you can just pick up. Yeah. Um, you can order. Yeah, but can um, I can I place? Order quickly. Yes, because <laughs> I need to place an order because obviously this is not a work. Yeah, <laughs> we we may have some in store tomorrow too because we have our boxes available for okay. pre-orders. And then we might just have some in store tomorrow for people that just want one or two. Yeah. Like this. Do it one more time. <laughs> Do it one more time. 
because I'm pretty sure Inar can relate to the fact that you need to be a perfectionist in order to be a chef. <laughs> so this is them. A little bit more. Room. And I'm and I'm pretty sure that he uh, works much faster. I'm yeah, assuming. yeah, but this is this is TV, and we are novices. <laughs> and uh, well, I am a novice because yeah. apparently yeah. Gavin could bake. Nobody will tell me not. I could. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Cooking and baking are two different skills. And I and I and cakes are different from bread. I'm <laughs> see Gavin agrees. <laughs> no, it's not. Got right? Huh? Making a bread is different than making a cake. Um yeah, it's different, it's different, very the different. Chef sets. Because I have a team that works with just bread. See? And if I tell them to make a cake, they're very lost. Yeah. And then I, I could a make a cake, yeah, but I can't. Cake. Apparently, I can't make bread. Mm -hmm. I have the next team that makes cakes and bread. They're not. It's very hard for them to need. See. And then if you might try make tortilla, that also different yeah. from the make bread. Yes, yes, yes. I try and need this like tortilla, but I never made it work out. And I'm like. I'm getting distracted now and I'm trying to make sure that these things <laughs> are in, uh, pretty perfect. So we're almost there. We're almost there. Okay, so once we roll it out. We have... So once it's almost finished rolling, you notice that inner that one is the most in air, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you just about three. Well, he's a professional. Yeah. So we can... You want to do the last one? one? Sure. the clung me and my bread making skills okay we can't all do nice things and be perfect mm -hmm. right. listen yeah you hear so this is the dough ah so then that's the dough that we started with yeah this is the dough we started with and then these are the doughs that we end with so if you you can touch it here Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is soft, a little bit yeah. And it's not as, as it's not, not stick. Yeah, so it doesn't stick there. This, it shouldn't stick at all there. Well, it shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. So that's our brioche <laughs> dough. The, yes, that's yeah. the brioche dough. And then that's going to rest again for yeah, hours this to, rest. to rise. Yeah. So how do you know if your dough is ready? If it has marks like this, mm -hmm. it means it, it needs a little bit more of um, work. Yeah, kneading. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So here we can see it still needs it's a little. Still, okay. Not completely smooth. Yeah, but all of this, the rest of it is smooth. So once you have this, it means it needs more. Okay. Kneading. Yeah. And then we have the hot grass buns already made. So TV kitchen. Oh, the last thing I forgot. Oh, well, right. This is the crosses. <laughs> because obviously hot yeah. grass buns. Well. The crosses, you have to wait till this ferments, but we could try and do two or Okay, two. so what is in this? So this is um, flour, okay. sugar, and milk. Okay. okay. Yeah. So w w I think traditional ones are different than this, mm -hmm. but we do this because it gi uh, gives a crunchier texture. Okay. So the, you're not even eating everything soft now. Mm -hmm. Everything, you have a little bit of texture. Okay. So from here, once it's fermented, well, oh. Crap. Nice. Piping is also a skill that I do not possess. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we were doing those ones with the guys last night, and I did like six, and then those guys were like, oh, that looks easy, and then they did it. Can I? Oh, no, you <laughs> you I can try, hand. but. <laughs> and now I'm afraid. <laughs> See? See? It doesn't. Pipe yeah, you, need you have to like squeeze, squeeze it. it. Yeah. But like also, you don't want the whole thing come out. There we go. You have to yeah. yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Gavin, right, you try. <laughs> Let's try. I don't. All right. I don't think. All right. Uh, all right. No, <laughs> Gavin Nakol because he's a baker. Not, I never yet do this. No, oh, oh, our ladies never done it, done it well. You've, you've iced a cookie before. Yeah, there we go. That, that looks nice. You've iced that a cookie nice. before. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 
Gavin knocked out apparently because Gavin is a professional baker and didn't tell anybody. Well, obviously, it's news to me. <laughs> apparently, I was the only one that did not know. There you go. No, so you got to know. Yeah. You don't see his stories? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the social media. He's always. <laughs> I'll go another one. Yeah. yeah. This one. Good. No, this, this part is fun. This part is fun. <laughs> All right. So after these are done, yeah, after we, you're done with the piping, yeah, we give a two hour fermentation between each. Each um, uh, procedure, we give a two hour fermentation. So they start off like this and they end up to that size. Okay, so yeah. So TV we kitchen! Finished, yeah, we do have the finished product yeah. here, um, which is um, after it's baked, of course. Yeah. All right, so yeah, there we go. So yeah, and they're nicely finished. And, and then these are glazed too, as yeah, well? Yeah, so we do a glaze with sugar, water, and then the seven spices that I had mentioned earlier. Uh -huh. um, we reduce it just a little syrup. And when it's about to finish, we glaze it, we brush it with the glaze, and we put it back in the oven for a little while just to have that. Um, so it looks like that is shinier a half across. Yes. You have to, right. Somebody have to take this away from me because <laughs> I'm having fun now. Yeah, you could do them. Yeah. Listen. Then we we'll take it back and bake it. That lasering. sounds good. Then you have to tell me what the results were like yeah, and how my piping skills helped. It, it See, it never worked. I got cocky and now it never worked. But they look nice. They look nice. Right. So, all right. All right. So we've done from start to finish um, the process. So <laughs> we started with the. Do so yeah, we started from scratch. We showed you how um, the dough looks after it rises and, and what you have to do to get the crosses, and then we see the finished product right here. Can we sample? Oh, we're okay. All right. Do you want to break bread? Sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, let's share one. Ooh, you see that crunch? Yes. All right. Yeah, so mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And notice what you said about the crust, mm -hmm. having the, the little crunch. Uh, crunch yeah. 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 So the bread is soft, but you have a little texture. Mm -hmm. with the sugar itself. How long do you leave it in the oven? Yeah, how long? Uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. At what degree? 100. Well, we work in Celsius, mm -hmm. so it's 180 degrees Celsius. I think Fahrenheit, maybe it's like 360, 365 yeah. Fahrenheit. Yeah. That's really good. So, yeah. Okay, so one more time, Blue by Inner Marine, yeah. located at? 1040 at Bachelor Avenue. Mm -hmm. And how can they find you on social media? Um, on social media, we have Instagram, blue.innermarine. We have the blue bakery dot em. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, we're on blue by Anna Marin, and I, I believe on Google you could find us too. The location, um, the contact number for the business itself, all our working hours. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much to you both for coming and showing us how to make hot cross buns with a twist. And um, stick around. We'll be back for my mouth is full. <laughs> trending <laughs> topics yeah. Yeah. with trending Gavin. <laughs> Stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs>
download the Smart Stream app on the Android Play Store and create your account to get access to movies and stream at home or on the go. Prepaid customers can purchase regular data packages or get a discounted rate on a special Smart Stream package by dialing 7737. Postpaid customers will be billed monthly. Never miss a movie again with Smart Stream. If you're looking for low-cost television advertising, have we got a deal for you. Advertise on Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds is one of the most effective methods for introducing yourself and your business to the community. Use our Daily Classifieds to recruit employees, promote specials, promote your products or services, promote a business opportunity, increase traffic to your website, and advertise items you have for sale. Let us help you save valuable time and money. Call us today at 223-0146 or visit us at our offices on Pony Drive to discuss how we can help your business grow affordably. Channel 5's Daily Classifieds. Advertise today. You never know when it might happen. You can't afford to take chances with your safety. You can't afford to take chances with your life. Because you never know when it might happen. Always be safe because you never know. So class, let's review your homework. What are some of the things that we can do to make sure everyone has a clean and reliable supply of water? Sir, we should turn off the faucet when using soap to bathe, to wash our hands, and maybe even our cars. This will cut our water bills and will save us a lot of water. My dad says we should keep the area around the water pipes close to our houses clean. Yes, sir. We should encourage our parents to pay their water bills so the entire village will always have clean water. Right, class. We should not forget to attend water bowl meetings and add our two cents. Make sure everyone has reliable, clean water. My mom says that we young people can volunteer to paint the public water pipe. So, how do we make sure we will always have reliable, clean water? Join the Clean Water Revolution! Get involved today and do your part to keep your water supply clean and reliable. The Department of Rural Development is working on achieving Goal 6 of the Sustainable Development Goals, which is to ensure access to water and sanitation for all. And we're back. And if you're joining us right now, it is Trending Talks Tuesdays, and that is where I give you a quick breakdown of some of the trending social media topics that people have been speaking about over the past week. And it's going to give you a little quick rundown uh, for today's show. And uh, one of the first things which uh, we're going to talk about is something which made a lot of waves on the internet recently. And that's news of another celebrity pregnancy. Ariana's got somebody else joining the club, and that is that Britney Spears announced via her Instagram story that she is pregnant with her third child and that is for, uh, with her current partner, Sam Asghari. Uh, Britney Spears announced it via Instagram and of course everybody was um, talking about that on all of the biggest social media platforms. 
Um, this is an interesting thing to talk about uh, because if we remember, and we did speak about uh, the, all of the drama surrounding the, her conservatorship and the ending of it, uh, because in those proceedings, it was brought out that it was alleged that part of her conservatorship was that she couldn't have children. Uh, this was imposed on her by the people who were in control. And uh, so she, it, and so she um, in the midst of all of her testimony, uh, was talking about the fact that she did want more children, but she was not allowed to. But now that she's broken free, it seems that, uh, you, that uh, she's finally been able to exercise her own choice and uh, she's welcoming her third child. Uh, so that is a pretty happy announcement. And uh, of course, people are going to be watching her as the months go by. Uh, and uh, we'll see if maybe we can see some interesting pregnancy fashion like we've been seeing with Rihanna over the past couple of months. Um, now, switching gears to some local trends, uh, two of the, uh, well, the first uh, local trend topic is uh, the presence of a pretty famous influencer uh, in Belize and that is known as Passport Heavy. You might know him from Instagram or YouTube where he has um, over 290,000 followers and uh, he's been in Belize over the past uh, few days and he has been blogging about it heavily on his Instagram and he's been taking pictures in lots of different locations. He's visited some of the Mayan temples, he's been to San Pedro, Half Moon Key, um, highlighting a lot and so as you can see on the screen up there he's um, sampling some of the local food and of course it is um, a big topic that people have been talking about because um, as we open up and as the tourism industry still recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic, um, attention, positive attention like this is definitely giving a big boost uh, to the visibility of some of our local um, sites, uh, local hotels and restaurants. And so um, it's been making a lot of waves on the internet and of course people locally have noticed as well. And so uh, we're hoping that this is some um, attention that can continue to um, shed some positive spotlight on Belize. And uh, finally, our other, uh, in other social media news um, is that um, Bujubantan uh, reggae artist was spotted, um, he arrived in Belize yesterday and uh, as soon as he arrived, uh, the pic started floating around. As you can see here, he is um, still at the airport. Um, so people's uh, pictures of him started floating around on the internet um, since yesterday. So uh, people have been um, pretty excited to see him. And of course, um, in this picture, we see him with um, the Honorable Shine Barrow. And uh, when he was speaking to the media yesterday, he did say that he was in Belize uh, to support some of Shine's initiatives and uh, be, um, and we saw him um, present in, in Belize City, um, walking around certain areas, connecting with the people. And um, of course, uh, Bujubantan has been uh, a pretty prominent figure in uh, the music industry over the past uh, 20 or 30 years and of course um, has been making big waves since his comeback um, from of course serving his sentence in the United States, going back home to Jamaica, uh, making music again and being part of the, um, being part, you know, being, uh, making his music um, once again. And uh, so there he is again with um, Honorable Barrow and um, you know, uh, Bojo again, uh, like uh, is enjoying some of the local, uh, local, sites and some food. Um, we went to the market as well. And so again, uh, we're hoping that this is another um, instance that we can shine some positive light on Belize. And of course, we hope that um, he's got that he has a good time while he's here and that, that, that uh, we show him a good time. But those are just some of the topics uh, which people have been talking about. And uh, that is trending talk for this week. Yeah, April, maybe. Yeah. yeah. How um, were you still um, enjoying some of those um, hot cross buns? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that um, after this we have to go get coffee. Oh, and, I know, and, and right? Get some buns going. Because remember, uh, remember, Anna said that that's the difference with this flour. It's high. It's yes. not regular bread. It's it has more fat and more sugar in it. And of so. course, you need coffee to add to your more fat and more sugar yeah. because why not? It's Tuesday. Yeah, just like call it a day. And <laughs> <laughs> this is a real good way to start your morning, I right, right? Definitely. I feel like we should do that more. I did not know you were a baker. I'm yeah. really sad about this. So like next trending topics with Gavin, he has to come and bake something. 
true. All right. He has Maybe. to come and bake a trending meal. Have you, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see what that is. Yeah. And, but my thing is not, is not cross ones. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, so well, it's okay. After that, you know, what's, your, what's your thing? Well, I could, I could do a good carrot cake. <laughs> You could it. do a car cake competition. Guys. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> and of course, with that, um, that is all we have for today's show. Um, we want to thank all of our guests that came in. Uh, we want to thank the traffic department, um, the police traffic the department, and the road safety program that came in and talked to us all about the do's and the don'ts yes. um, for this Easter holiday. So try to be safe out there. And I, I know you've been hearing us kind of um, implement the safety measures, but guys, Really and truly, just be safe while they're out there. It's up to you to, um, to protect yourself and your loved ones. And of course, we had um, Edmund Stain. Yes, from Inspirational Promotions. Um, if you do want to contact him to help his initiative, it is, he's giving back to the community in a big way, helping mm -hmm. a lot of underprivileged um, children um, in the community when it comes to their school supplies and even just um, resources to enable them to do their homework and even provide haircuts and some basic necessities, food and stuff like that. So they're always looking for people who are willing to assist. Mm -hmm. So um, of course, their latest initiative has been uh, the laptops that yeah. they have now been able. They've got 12 laptops, so they're able to go into the community, have kids work on their homework and stuff. So if you want to help in any way you can, please uh, reach out. Uh, they definitely love to uh, get that support. Yes, of course. And of course, we ended off with um, Blue by Aner Marin and those lovely hot cross buns. So if you're somebody that is into all of that baking for the for the season and the holidays, you know, you can always check out Aner's um, Bakery, Blue by Aner, uh, where he already has those pre-made yeah. if you are not somebody that can bake. Um, they were lovely. They were delicious. Um, but we are completely out of time yes, we are. and so we have to say goodbye but of course if you have any questions or concerns or comments you can drop us a email yep, at yeah. yeah. at <laughs> and of course our socials yep you can find us on facebook at open your eyes busy and instagram at oie believes yes and of course we want to thank you so much for tuning in getting up and starting your morning right with us um see you guys next time and be sure to keep your minds your eyes and your heart open Bye, Open Your Eyes was brought to you by the Belize Bank, our country, your bank.